okay, for today's topic, I'll be discussing first the camera and its uh, basic parts and function and then to be discussed later about the photographic lenses or yung lenses or yung lens na tinatawag natin as well as its inherent defects or yung aberration and the types of lenses according to its focal length uh, exposure triangle wherein mapapag-usapan natin yung three pillars of photography uh, na kung saan involved si shutter speed, si aperture and then si ISO sensitivity and then lastly the depth of field na kung saan apektado of course uh, especially when we are going to control the aperture opening and so on. So, mapapag-usapan natin yan as well as the factors affecting the depth of field sa isang photograph or sa isang image. So, now, i-discuss muna natin si camera. Okay, camera is a light light box to capture an image or to record an image uh, wherein merong shutter at one end and a holder of sensitized material o yung tinutukoy nating film o yung sensor when it comes to digital uh, cameras at the other and controlling the amount of light that will reach uh, the film. Alam naman natin kung paano nag-work si light uh, para maapektuhan si film or yung sensors natin to record an image. So, napag-usapan na natin yan on how film works together with the light and the camera as a whole. So, now, pag-usapan lang natin kung ano yung camera. So, di ba, we have various kind of camera from simplest one, yung madaling operate to the most complicated. And all of these operate in the same principle. So, kahit yan ay gano ka simple, gano ka gaan, gano ka laki, di ba, gano ka advanced na, na camera, all of these operate in the same principle. Na kung saan, di ba, kahit anong klaseng camera pa yung gamit mo, there is a need to expose those sensitized material mapa-film yan or the digital sensors kay light. Kailangan ng exposure kay light para maka-create tayo or para maka-form tayo ng image. And the light is controlled by the lens. So, na-discuss na rin natin yan na si lens is responsible para makontrol yung light na papasok kay camera uh, na may malaking contribution dun sa sharpness ng image na mapoproduce natin. And as well as the aperture opening, so to be discussed later, and the shutter speed na i-operate natin kung gano'ng kabilis yung pagbuka o yung pagsara ng shutter na makakaroon ng contribution again kung gano'ng karaming light ang papasok or kung gano'ng kaunti. So, again, lahat ng yan is nag-ooperate on, uh, on the same principle na kung saan yung mga factors na yon para makaproduce tayo ng image is kailangan. Okay, next, uh, the basic parts of the camera. So, we have uh, five. The body, the lens, the shutter, the holder of the sensitized material, and the view finder. So, first, the body or the light tight box. So, ito si body. Uh, this suggest an enclosure or the void of light. So, kaya nga natin tinawag na light tight box si camera, di ba? Uh, typically, di ba, lahat naman ng camera, automatic, I mean, is a light light box. So, meaning, a box. So, meaning to say, hindi allowed na pumasok si light, not unless pinindot mo si shutter. Kasi kapag mayroong ibang butas dyan, or ibang uh, means na makakapasok si light, na hindi mo naman pa uh, intended na mag-capture ng image, maluluto or masisira ang film mo, or kaya naman ma expose na yan agad-agad kay light at hindi mo na magagamit yan or magagamit mo siya pero pangit na yung magiging resulta ng image mo kasi, kasi na-expose na kay light. So, the body again is responsible para ma ma magkaroon ng enclosure o maitago mo si film kay light. So, ganun, ganun yung uh, trabaho niya. So, uh, diba, uh, the light exposure allows only to enter when it opens and closes on predetermined time or yun nga yung trabaho ni shutter. Ang light, it allows only to, to enter the camera once na si shutter ay pinindot mo. At trabaho yan ni, uh, ni body or ni light tight box again para ma-devoid yung light not unless pinindot mo na si shutter. So, kailangan talaga, walang kahit anong liwanag ang makakapasok dyan. Again, 
Not unless, pinindot mo si Shatter at nag, uh, take ka na ng iyong poto. Pangalawa is si Lens. Ito si Lens. Uh, function of this lens is to focus the light coming from the subject. So, di ba, uh, the lens uh, chiefly or mainly responsible for the sharpness of the image form through uh, which passes during the exposure. Mara. So, hindi ibig sabihin niya na meron tayong lens directly papasok agad yan kay film. So, meron pa tayo ditong uh, camera parts na kung saan nag, nag-close or I mean nag, na humaharang pa rin kay film or kay sensors natin para hindi ma-expose kay light. Again, not unless pipindutin mo na si shutter at magbubukas yan. So, mamaya madidiscuss pa natin yan. Uh, for now, ang trabaho ni Lens is to focus the light that uh, is coming from the subject. So, uh, responsible si Lens for the sharpness of an image na pwede nating maproduce kay uh, film or ma-record -ma kay film. And then, mamaya nga madidiscuss din natin na uh, the lens itself, meron niyang mga kanya-kanyang defect na makaka-apekto din sa sa uh, product natin or dun sa image na pwede natin ma-produce. So, dapat yung lenses natin na naandyan kay camera is walang uh, defects or aberration nang sa ganun, maging maganda rin yung resulta natin or yung end product which is the photograph or yung image. Okay, next, the shutter. So, it is used to allow light to enter through the lens and reach the film for a predetermined intervals of time which light is again blocked off from the film. So, si shutter natin is na andyan po yan. And then, we have here the shutter button na kung saan kapag pinindot mo yan, bubuka si shutter. So, si shutter po, yan po yung responsible para makapasok si light kay film. Kapag hindi mo pinindot si shutter button at kapag hindi tumaas si shutter dyan, ah, walang papasok na light kay film. So, yan po yung trabaho ni shutter. Again, it allows light to enter through the lens kahit merong light na nagtumatama kay lens kung hindi naman bumubuka si shutter sa pamamagitan ng pagpindot mo kay shutter button, walang papasok na ilaw kay film. So, sa ating mga lumang cameras na kung saan hindi natin kayang iset si shutter speed, we have a standard uh, speed, I mean the time, ba na sa kahit anong ulit ng pindot mo dyan, ganun at ganun din yung bilis ng pagbuka at pagsara niya. While ngayon, ba mas marami na tayong cameras na advanced na kaya nating iset yung pagbuka at pagsara ng shutter depende sa pangangailangan natin. Kung gusto mong mas mabilis, pwede yon Palta mo si shutter speed. Kung gusto mong mas mabagal yung kanyang pagsara, yung kanyang pagbuka, pwede mo yung, yung, uh, pwede mo yung iset. Again, si shutter, responsible yan kung gaano katagal mo i-expose si film kay light or kung gaano mo kabilis i-expose si film kay light. Pang-apat is the holder of the sensitized material. So, located to at the opposite side of the film. I mean, opposite side of the lens, sorry. And its function is to hold a filmly the sensitized material which is the film. So, yan yung nag-hold kay film in its place during exposure to prevent the formation of multiple or blurred image of the subject. Diba? E, generally, the, the job or the, uh, yung trabaho ng holder ng sensitized material natin is to hold the film or the sensitized material nga and to make sure that the film is in its place. So, na, nakapwesto siya kung saan siya dapat nakapwesto, especially during exposure. At ganun din, kapag kailangan ng i-advance or kailangan ng paltan yung film na nakasalang, so responsible si holder ng sensitized material para mapaltan yan, ba ma-advance yung panibagong set ng film or yung roll of film para maiwasan yung pagdodoble ng image. Kasi kung hindi yan ma-advance at hindi maro-roll yung film inside, Yung panibagong set mo ng image na ika-capture, mauulit lang dito at madodoble. So, trabaho yan ng holder ng sensitized material through the other parts of the camera. At to be exactly, the film ad advanced lever na kung saan yun yung nag-rotate or yung nag -ro roll para ma-advance mo si film kay camera or dun sa holder of the sensitized material. Especially, uh, the blurred images na pwedeng ma-produce kung hindi yan uh, steady dyan inside the camera 
gagalaw at gagalaw sa sensitized material at pangit na magiging resulta ng ating uh, photograph. Last D is the viewfinder. So, dito sa ating illustration, wala siya. Pero, yan yung portion o yung part ng camera na kung saan dyan ka sumisilip. So, minsan, nandito siya sa ibabaw. Meron ditong portion na may sinisilip ka. Minsan, nandito siya sa baba or dun sa likod. So, si viewfinder is a means of determining the field of view of the camera or the extent of the coverage of the lens. So, iyan, to be exact, is yung portion or yung part ng camera na sinisilip mo para makita mo yung kinukuhanan mo. Diba? Yan yung, yung sinisilip mo kay camera to, to, to calculate or to measure kung gano'ng kalawak yung sakop ng kukuhanan mo. So, yan po si view finder. Diba? Again, yan yung portion or part ng camera where you can see the subject to be taken. Diba? You have to calculate the extent or, or view of a coverage to be taken. So, ikaw yung mag adjust Kasi makikita mo dyan kung gano'ng kalawak yung gusto mong kuhanan. Kung gano'ng kalapit, so mag adjust ka. Through the viewfinder, sisilipin mo siya dyan. So, yan yung basic parts ng camera natin. Next, uh, the other parts of the manual camera, we have here the mirror. It is used when the shutter is closed. So, ito yung nagre-reflect kay light ng, of the image through a prism to the eye of the photographer. So, kanina may tinatawag tayong viewfinder. Si mirror yung responsible para mapadala natin kay uh, viewfinder yung extent ng view or yung coverage na kinukuha na natin or yung kung saan nakatutok si lenses natin or yung camera lenses natin para makita natin yung gusto nating kuhanan. Si mirror po yung bahala dyan. So, sa ating camera, ang mirror po ay nasa loob. So, eto siya, si mirror. Eto si viewfinder, yung tinutukoy natin kanina. And then, nandito si lens. So, Again, si mirror yung bahala para maparating natin kay viewfinder o kay photographer yung gusto nating kuhanan or kung kanina nakatutok si camera lens at nakita niya at siya yung mag-adjust kung gano'n ba kalapit or kung gano'n ba ka-focus sa subject or and so on. So, basta si mirror yung bahala na magpadala ng image or nung magpadala nung itsura or nung reflected light that is coming from the subject kay photographer through the view Finder. So, eto si light, papasok kay lens, si mirror, magre-reflect kay prism or yung sa mirror natin or dun sa penta prism na tinatawag natin and then pupunta yan kay viewfinder para makita ni photographer. So, once na yung shutter button natin is pinindot, automatically si shutter natin bubukas yan. At si mirror, tataas din po yan kasi kapag hindi yan tumaas, walang magre-register na image kay Film. So, automatic yan kapag pinindot mo si shutter button, tataas si mirror, and then bubukas si shutter curtain. So, ganun yung mangyayari dyan. The mirror moves up, diba, magpiflip, uh, yan pataas, and then the light rays now, diba, falls onto the film, recording the photograph. So, yun, yun lang yung trabaho nyan, para mag-reflect si light, kay viewfinder at nakita ni photographer and then wala yang kinalaman kung gano'ng kadaming papasok na ilaw kay film and so on. Yun lang yung trabaho niya. Wala yang kinalaman kay exposure kung gano'ng kaliwanag or gano'ng kadilim yung mapoproduce natin. Yun lang yung trabaho niya. Uh, again, ang trabaho niya is to reflect the image through a prism to the eye of photographer para makita natin uh, yung Uh, field of coverage or yung the subject or yung the object to be taken. Next is the aperture. The opening in the lens that controls how much light gets into the camera and how long it is allowed to expose the film. So, ito po yung ating aperture opening. Ito yung lens kabu sa, as a whole. We have the opening dyan inside the lens sa kung saan pa, uh, pwede nating mapalaki, pwede nating mapaliit. Diba? Kasi pwede mo siyang makontrol. Pwede mo siyang ma-manipulate to make it smaller and to make it larger by adjusting the f-stop number. So, madidiscuss natin yan mamaya. Basta si aperture opening, responsible yan kung gano'n ba kadami yung papasok na light, ba diba? kay film or dun kay camera natin. Automatically yan, kung gano'n kadami, of course, malaki yung opening yan. Kung gano'n kaunti, 
automatic yan, maliit yung buka ng aperture opening natin. So, yan lang yung trabaho ni aperture. Na may kinalaman dun sa exposure natin kung gano'n ba, again, kadami or kaunti, yung papasok na light kay camera at tatama kay film. Mapapag-usapan pa natin yan mamaya, lalo na yung f-stop numbers. So, yan lang muna siya. Next is the f-stop ring. This refers to the control uh, which sets the size of the aperture opening as the uh, photograph is taken. So, meron nga tayong aperture opening na kaya natin makontrol and manipulate. Si f-stop ring yung bahala dyan. Uh, ikutin mo lang yan, ba? Diba? Depende dun sa aperture opening na gusto mong ma-attain. So, eto siya. Diba? The aperture opening, so depende yan, we have 1.8 to 22, and then depende rin yan sa mga ibang cameras natin kung gano'ng kalaki yung aperture opening nila or kung gano'ng kalait. Basta si f-stop ring, once, once na yan ay inikot mo or may na manipulate mo or kinontrol mo, pwede mong mapalakihan or mapaliitan yung butas ni aperture. Na may kinalaman kung gano'ng ba kadaming light ang papasok or yung kung gano'ng kaunti yung light na papasok. Okay, next is the shutter speed dial. This regulates how long the shutter stays open. So, uh, yung control na kung saan pwede mong man manipulate or makontrol again kung gano'ng kabilis or gano'ng kabagal uh, mag uh, mag-close and mag-open yung ating shutter curtain. Uh, kung gano'ng katagal mo i-expose si film kay light. So, ito po yung ating shutter speed dial sa manual camera na iikot mo lang yan and then itatapat mo dun sa corresponding numbers na may corresponding speed or shutter speed na nakalaan. So, for example, si 1 second. So, pag, pag sinet mo yan dyan, yung tagal ni shutter curtain to open and to closes, ay eh, ganyan katagal, 1 second. And then, the fastest here, na example natin dito sa ating picture is the 4,000. So, kapag yan ang sinet mo, kaya mo i-capture yung moving object. So, madidiscuss pa natin yan mamaya. Uh, dito lang, sa part ng camera, we have a portion sa camera na pwede mong iset, ikutin, itapat mo sa numbers ng uh, shutter speed na gusto mo para maset mo kung gaano kabilis or kung gaano kabagal na kung saan, di ba, it indicates the timing of the shutter kung gaano katagal mo siyang I mean, kung gano'n mo katagal gustong i-expose si film kay light or kung gano'n kabilis mo lang i-expose si film kay light. So, si shutter speed ang bahala dyan sa ating manual camera. Ito siya. Next is the film advance lever. This is used to advance or move each a small piece of film after the photograph is taken. So, ito siya. Yung tinutukoy ko kanina na kung saan, kailangan mo of course i-move or ma-advance yung film na nagamit mo na or na-expose mo na kay light para makapag-take ka na ng another photograph. ba diba? After taking a photo, you have to adjust the film and the advance film lever yung responsible dyan. Kasi kung hindi mo yan i-advance, kung hindi mo i-move to another set of uh, film, na hindi pa exposed kay light, madodoble yung exposure ng film na nakasalang. So, yan yung trabaho ni film advance lever. So, kailangan mo siyang i-advance para mag-adjust or ma-move. And then, ma-place yung another set of a film, yung kaduktong niya sa roll film, and then, saka ka mag-take ng another photograph. So, yan yung trabaho ni film advance lever. Next is the rewind crank. This is used only after all the photographs have been taken. It is used to rewind the exposed film back to the canister. So, the purpose ni rewind crank is to roll back the film after na magamit mo na lahat ng pieces of roll film sa ating camera na nakalagay kay camera. So, once na tapos na exposed na lahat yung film, ibig sabihin nagamit mo na lahat si film. Si rewind crank yung bahala jan pull it back or to roll it back to uh, into the film canister. So, usually, ito ay iniikot clockwise and then another purpose or yung use ni rewind crank is to ensure if the film is properly load, uh, loaded inside the camera. 
na kung saan kapag hindi to nag-spin ng maayos or ng smoothly, hindi mo siya naikot, may sabit, once na inikot mo, ibig sabihin yung film inside the camera or dun sa holder ng sensitized material inside the camera is hindi maayos yung pagkakalagay. Ibig sabihin, mali or may something na mali or sabit inside the camera na mali yung pagkakalagay mo. So, yun yung dalawang use ni rewind crank. To roll the film back once na iyan ay naubos na and then uh, to ensure that uh, tama yung pagkakalagay ni film inside the camera. And then, the shutter release button. The control that releases the aperture opening lifts up the mirror and exposes the film to the light. So, ito si shutter button or si release, si shutter release na tinatawag natin or yung shutter release button na tinatawag natin na kung saan ito yung button na pinipindot mo to take the photograph. ba diba? again, uh, usually ang tawag dyan is release, release button or the shutter release and etc. It is normally on the right hand, on the side top of the camera. Na kapag pinindot mo yan, automatically gusto mo na mag-take ng photo, nakafocus ka na kay camera, and then tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, pag pinindot mo na yan, tataas na si mirror, and then si shutter uh, curtain natin is tataas na din, and then papasok na si light kay film. And then once na tapos na, babalik na yung shutter curtain natin to normal, and then bababa na rin si mirror. So, ganun yung nangyayari dyan. And mamaya, madidiscuss pa natin yan ng mas maayos. So, again, si shutter button or rele uh, shutter release button, yan yung uh, button na kung saan pinipindot mo that allows you to, to expose the film kay light. Okay, lastly is the ASA dial. Discuss na natin yan. Uh, we have the ASA, ISO, and then the DIN, yung film speed natin. Uh, na kung saan dito sa ating manual camera, we have a portion or a part of the manual camera na responsible na i-assign natin kung ano ba yung number ng asa natin or yung, yung uh, sensitivity ni film kay light. Sabi nga dyan, the asa number assigned to film reflects how sensitive it is to light or how quickly it will react to light. So, eto siya. Diba, yung the proper setting lang naman niya ng ASA a number or film speed natin na nakalagay kay film. Na kung saan, kung babalikan natin, diba, if you want to take a photograph ng moving or fast action na subject mo or ng object, kailangan mo gumamit ng fast film. So, ibig sabihin, higher na ASA number yung kailangan mong iset dyan. And then, the na kung normal lang na type of uh, subject mo, di ba, the lower the asa, uh, asa dial yung kailangan mo lang dyan, hindi mo kailangan ng fast film speed so the higher the number, di ba, the faster the film, and anything that is above 200 is considered as a fast film so yan lang naman yung trabaho na asa dial the proper, I mean the designation of the proper film speed uh, with regards to the film na nakasalpak kay camera so, yan po si ASA dial. Next, the types of camera. So, na-discuss ko na to sa inyo, yung iba dito, karamihan. Uh, pasadahan lang ulit natin. We have first the box camera or the box type camera. And then, for more than several decades, the box camera or the viewfinder camera was the instrument of choice for the casual amateur photographer. Kasi yan naman talaga yung pinakaunang type ng camera natin noon, which is inexpensive and simple, and it was nevertheless capable of excellent results under many conditions. It is normally fitted with a single lens, but a limited range of aperture, kasi yan ay fixed na yung aperture opening niya, so hindi mo siya gaano makokontrol. Not unlike ngayon sa mga cameras natin that is capable of controlling how big the aperture or how small the aperture is na may kinalaman sa kung gano'n kadaming light ang papasok kay camera. So, yung box camera natin noon, uh, may limited lang yan ng range of aperture and a single speed lift shutter. Yung tinutukoy ko kanina din na nasabi ko na yung mga unang cameras natin, hindi natin nasaset yung uh, speed niya, yung shutter speed niya. So, we have only a single speed na setting na hindi mo na siya mababago. So, yun po yung box camera natin. 
na nag-originate tiba sa camera obscura, yung camera without lens, na kung saan uh, in-improve uh, in na lang natin ang in-improve, nilagyan ng lenses to produce a sharper image, and then so on. Kaya nagkaroon tayo ng box camera. Next is the folding roll film camera. Second in popularity only to the box camera, though it was a box camera whose lens was incorporated into a movable bellows that could slide back and forth on a rail, allowing the lens to change, change sorry, focus. Diba? Ito to si folding roll film camera na sabi nga natin, movable. So, pwede mong i- is slide back or or and forth or forward yung kanyang rail did ba allowing the lens to move forward also to change the focus it was manufactured in a variety of formats and basically ito nga yung kanyang itsura next is the single lens reflex or SLR na tinatawag natin a camera with one lens only for both viewing and picture taking. The image is reflected onto a viewing screen by a movable mirror in the camera. Ito yung tinutukoy natin kanina na camera na kung saan we have mirror inside na, na responsible para makita natin kung ano yung uh, tinututukan ng ating camera lens. Yan, a camera with one lens, diba, that is only for viewing, diba, and picture taking na nagpo-focus Otomotutok sa ating subject, we have only one lens na responsible dyan na kung saan si image is reflected into a viewing screen by a movable mirror of the camera. Yan yung karaniwan or karamihan na sa cameras natin ngayon. Na kung saan, di ba dati we have a separate na silipan, si viewfinder, wala tayong mirror na ginagamit. So, si viewfinder natin, kung ano yung sinisilip mo dito, Iba yung coverage niya doon sa coverage ng lens na tinututukan mo. So, we have the single lens uh, reflex, again, na kung saan the mirror, eto, uh, flips out of the way just before the shutters open. So, permitting or allowing the light to enter and then strike the film. So, eto ay same lang with the DSLR or the uh, digital single lens reflex. Yung kaibahan lang niya is meron tayong digital viewing on the rear LCD screen na kung saan nakikita rin natin doon sa LCD screen doon sa digicams natin kung ano yung na, kung saan nakatutok si lenses natin at kung ano yung possible na makita natin kay viewfinder so meron tayong LCD screen sa mga DSLR natin na makikita natin yung view where in diba sa SLR ginagamit to sa ating mga film cameras na kung saan meron tayong films na ginagamit a sensitized material and then ang kaibahan lang niya sa DSLR is ginagamitan natin ng sensor. Ginagamitan natin ng memory cards to uh, to store the thousands of images. Again, si single lens reflex, ito lang yung camera natin na ginagamitan ng I mean, the camera with one lens. Same as lang kay digital cameras, ang kaibahan lang nila si Digicam, 'di ba, capable of viewing the subject aside from the viewfinder dun sa LCD screen na meron kay Digicam. But the point here is the single lens reflex from the term itself, the single lens na kung saan we have the single set of or series of lens kay camera na siya na yung responsible para magpadala din nung image sa viewfinder. So, we have the viewfinder, nakikita mo si subject or yung si view or yung si na kinukuhanan mo through the lens na yan. Through the one, I mean, through the set of lens na meron dyan. Kasi dati nga, si viewfinder, bukod pa dyan, ito si viewfinder, automatic yan. Kung ano lang yung sakop ni viewfinder dito, ng lenses ni viewfinder, yun yung nakikita mo at hindi siya Walang mirror na responsible na magre-reflect sa kanya kay viewfinder. So, bukod na mechanism, bukod na, bukod na purpose si lens, bahala na magpadala kay film ng, ng light or ng image. And then sa viewfinder, yung lenses niya dito, bahala magpadala kay viewfinder kung ano yung makikita ni subject. So, magkabukod. So, now we have SLR. Same lang kung ano yung nakikita, diba? What the uh, camera lenses nakikita mo ngayon sa viewfinder. Diba? And then, kung ano yung makakaptured mo through the lenses ng camera na tutukan mo, yun din yung nakikita mo kay viewfinder. So, yan si single lens reflex na meron tayong DSLR 
na digitally kaya mong makita din dun again sa uh, sa kanyang screens or dun sa LCD screens yung yung subject na kinukuhanan mo. So ito pa yung isang example niya, di ba? Light pumasok, ito si Fia, uh, si mirror, meron tayong prism dito and then ito si viewfinder at nandito si photographer. Ayun yung uh, way mo para makita mo si light through the single lens reflex. Kapag digi ka, meron ditong uh, LCD screen. Hindi mo na kailangan tumingin kay viewfinder, pero pwede mo pa rin naman siya magamit. Meron lang tayong another means para makita mo kung ano ba yung subject na tinututukan ni lens, ni camera lenses mo, or nung camera mo as a whole. Next, ito na nga yung tinutukoy natin kanina na viewfinder camera. Camera with a viewfinder that is separate from the lens Use in taking the picture. A, a simple point and shoot disposable camera is an example of a viewfinder camera, but not all viewfinders cameras are simple. So, yung mga normal type ng viewfinder camera, ito yung kanyang example. We have a separate na mechanism, I mean separate lenses na tumututok kay subject, and then yung lenses dito, dyan ka sumisilip sa likod yung sa viewfinder, at ito yung responsible para makita mo kung ano yung subject sa harapan mo. So, kung titingnan mo dito, di ba? Ito yung tinututukan ni lens na mara-record mo na image while yung sinisilip mo kay viewfinder dahil nga separate, magkaiba yung coverage iba yung sakop. So, medyo may kahirapang gamitin pero hindi nga naman lahat, di ba? Sabi natin, hindi naman lahat ng viewfinder cameras is ganun lang kasimple. So, meron tayong magagandang klase ng viewfinder cameras na capable pa rin to produce an image and then uh, capable of focusing or uh, producing an image that is in focus. Kung ano yung gusto mo makita or kung anong gusto mo i-take na photo. Uh, but in short, the viewfinder camera, yan is, uh, meron na separate na lenses that is for viewing the subject and then the lenses that is focused on the subject. Lens that is focus, I mean lenses that is only for the viewing of the subject through the viewfinder and then the lenses that is focus on the subject. So, magkaiba yung coverage or magkaiba yung sakop ngayon. Yung nakikita mo kay viewfinder, hindi yun yung sakop ni lenses ng camera mo. So, that is the viewfinder camera na malaking kaibahan again kay SLR na kung ano yung tinututukan ni camera lenses mo or yung series of lens mo dito sa camera, yun din yung nakikita mo kay viewfinder kasi you have now the mirror na responsible para ipadala yung image na tinututukan mo through the prism and then lalabas kay viewfinder o dun mo makikita kay viewfinder. Again, through the mirror na tinatawag natin ngayon na single lens reflex. Next is the single-use camera. Camera that is used only once, it is, uh, it is disposed of after the film is removed for processing. So, ito siya. Diba, once na yan ay binigay mo na sa developing company or store, i-recycle ire lang nila yan at gagamitin yung some parts na pwede pa to make a new one at i ire nila. Diba, na-discuss na natin yan dati na kung saan Uh, Kodak company na kung saan uh, yung films na nilalagay mo dyan, na naimbento nila, once na naubos na yan, ipapadevelop mo lang sa kanila, pero yan ay i-dispose na, but sila, pagkakakitaan pa nila yan, ibebenta nila, i-recycle nila, and yun na yun. But dun sa user, hindi mo na yan pwedeng gamitin, not unless kaya mong i-recycle yan ng ikaw. But hindi ikaw yung manufacturer niyan, hindi mo alam kung paano gumawa ng camera, hindi mo yan magagawa. So, the, the company, sila na yung bahala dyan. And then, ang, ang iintay mo na lang sa kanila is yung develop uh, photograph mo. Yung positive images mo o yung photograph mo through the negative films na binigay mo sa kanila. That is the single-use camera. And then, the instant camera na discuss na rin natin, the Polaroid, the type of camera with self-developing film, and then the most famous are those made by the Polaroid Corporation, and then the Polaroid is no longer manufacturer such cameras, o yung na-develop diba ni Edwin Land, na kung saan instantly, pagkapindot mo, you can produce a negative 
a positive image through the negative itself na ginamit mo o yung film na nandun sa kanya which is uh, will turn into the positive image kapag pindot mo lalabas na yung camera I mean lalabas na yung image or yung photo mo yan po yung uh, instant camera or yung polaroid cam- camera na kilala natin ngayon so yun po yung mga types of cameras natin again we have the box type or the box camera Folding roll film camera, single lens reflex, yung meron tayo ngayon, together with the digital cameras or the DSLR, digital single lens reflex, viewfinder camera, single use camera, and then the instant camera. Okay, next is the camera lenses. Lens is an optical lenses or assembly of lenses used in conjunction with the camera body and mechanism to make images of objects either in photographic film or on other media capable of storing an image chemically or through the use of film or electronically. Di ba yung mga digital cameras natin through the sensor? So, si, si lens, ito siya, di ba? Uh, hindi porket yan lang yung nasa bukana or yung nakikita natin dun sa outer part ng ating camera, yan lang yung lens na responsible nga to produce, ba diba? to, to focus, to make a sharper image kapag tinutok natin kay subject natin. Yung light that is coming from the subject sa kanya papasok kay lens. So, hindi ibig sabihin na siya lang yan alone. Uh, inside of the camera, ba diba? Uh, each lens is a series of convex and concave optical elements. So, marami yung lens inside the camera that works together, di ba, na kung saan dyan tumatagos yung light na pumapasok and then refracting it into a single sharp focal point. Si lens po ang responsible dyan. The lens is also known as the photographic lens, objective lens, or photographic objective. So, we have two types of lens. Napag-aralan nyo na to during your high school and then elementary siguro. We have a convergent or yung positive o yung tinatawag natin convex na lens. Type of lens in which is always thicker at the center and thinner at the side. Wherein light passing through it are bended toward each other papunta sa sa bawat isa or magmimit sila papalapit, di ba? Other on the other side of the lens meeting at a point. Ito si convergent lens natin. That is thicker, di ba? At the center and then mas manipis sa side. So, light rays that is passing through it are bended toward each other. Magkakasalubong sila toward it, each other and then meeting at a same point. Yun po yung trabaho ni convergent or the convex lens natin sa ating camera producing a real and inverted image. So, using the uh, convex lens, ang napoproduce mong image is inverted. Katulad nito. So, this is the object or the subject na ginagamit mo. ba diba? Tinutok mo si convex lens dyan. And then, yung makikita mo on the other side is an inverted image na produkto niya. So, yan po yung kanyang uh, resulta. That is either diminished in size, so pwedeng lumiit, or pwede namang mamagnified using the convex lens. So, pwedeng malaki, pwedeng lumiit, or, or, or the actual size din mismo nung object mo. While the divergent lens or the negative, o yung tinatawag natin na concave lens, type of lens which is always thinner at the center, mas mapayat naman sa gitna, and then thicker at the side, wherein the light na, pum- na pumapasok dyan or the light passing through it are bended away as compared to the convex na kung saan uh, bended toward each other. So, sa lubong sila, dito naman, paiwas sa isa't isa yung light rays na nabibend as if it coming from one Point. So, yan yung kaibahan nila. Na kung saan ang resulta niya or siya is nakakapag-produce ng virtual and upright image. And then, the image itself or the uh, subject or the object to be taken is lumiliit. And then, it is formed between the object 
o yung subject mo and the lens. So, sa gitna siya na po produce. Na kung saan, sabi nga natin, di ba, ah, uh, yung lens natin sa camera, it is a series of lens. Kung tayo is magre-rely lang to a one kind of lens, anong itsura ng image na mapoproduce natin? At saan mapoproduce yung image? Katulad nito, the image is produced in between the object and then the lens. So, ano mangyayari? So, again, through the series of lens, using this uh, convex and concave lenses, yan yung use nila. It can produce a, a real and then the vertical image and then the uh, upright and virtual image. Nung saan, uh, through the series of lenses, the combination of these lenses, makakapag-produce tayo ng image diba, that is sharp and then maganda. Through, again, the use of these lenses, through this series of lenses, uh, to be specific, uh, using these two types of camera lens, the divergent, diba? Uh, other term is negative or the concave. And then the convergent, which is the positive and the convex lens. Okay, next is the focusing. This refers to the setting of proper distance in order to form a sharp image. The lens of the camera, except those with fixed focus, requires focusing. A lens may be focused by any of the following. So, we have uh, types of uh, focusing na mechanism na kung saan uh, it allows us to produce or to set the proper distance to produce a sharp image. It is the uh, moving of the lens element, di ba, yung focusing natin, focusing ring, until the sharpest possible image is achieved depending on the distance of the subject from the camera. Etong focusing na tinutukoy natin, in short, is para makaproduce tayo ng sharp image, hindi blurred, di ba? hindi malabo, and so on. Yung focusing, the uh, setting of proper distance, di ba? kasi may kinalaman po yung, yung sharpness ng image o yung pagka-focus ng camera or ng, ng image di ba? natin na nag-register kay camera dun sa proper distance niya kay camera lens. And then the camera lens nga of the camera, Except uh, those with a fixed focus kasi may mga camera nga tayo, lalo na nung mga sinauna pa na hindi pa uso yung mga gantong klaseng advanced na, na types ng camera na capable nga of focusing to produce a sharp image. Kasi meron nga ganto na fixed na. Hindi mo na kailangan ni focus. And then again, uh, focusing or a lens may be focused by any of the following. So we have types of focusing. First is the Focusing scale or the scale bed. Ito siya. A scale is usually found at the lens barrel by feet or meter na kung saan uh, it indicates preset distance in feet or in meters nga to focus the lens of the camera yung distance ng object diba, the subject to be photographed is sinusukat, measured or at least estimated or calculated and the point or marker on the lens, di ba? For example, na measure mo na siya. And then now, yung yung marker or yung points or yung designated na na numbers of feet or meters, ngayon is ia adjust mo to the corresponding number on the scale. Depende dun sa measured mo na distance ng object dun sa camera lens mo. To focus the the camera or to focus the camera lens to produce a sharp image. Okay, yan yung isa sa type ng focusing na kung saan nakarelay ka dun sa focusing scale bed or yung sa scale bed mo sa camera. Again, um, uh, na kailangan mong estimate or measure again yung distance ni object kay camera lens mo para maging sharp yung image mo, para maging focused yung object mo or yung subject mo to be taken sa iyong camera. Kasi kapag yan yan hindi properly uh, focus or hindi properly measured yung distance niyan, out of focus yung image na mapoproduce mo. And that is the use of scale bed or the focusing scale. Kailangan mo yung imaneobra, kumbaga, manually. Next is the range finders. We have uh, types of, uh, three types of range finders na kung saan uh, it is a mechanism that measure the angle of the convergence, 
of the light that is coming from a subject as seen from two apertures or opening viewed, uh, but viewed at the same time. So, we have range finders na kung saan meron tayong tatlo, split, coincident, and the ground glass. Through the use of this type of range finders, kaya nating ma-focus yung subject na kinukuha na natin. Okay, unahin natin si split image. The image of a straight line in the object appears to be cut into halves, so kalahate, and separated from each other when the lens is not in focus. So, meaning to say, kapag nakita mo yan, na yung uh, image mo is na-cut in two halves or sa kalahate, ibig sabihin, out of focus yung iyong camera lens. So, magiging focus lang siya, di ba? Once na uh, kinontrol mo na yung camera mo, inikot mo na yung ring mo, yung focusing ring mo, and once na nagtagpo sila, di ba? Naging tama na, di ba? Yung nakikita mo sa iyong viewfinder, nagtagpo sila or nagpantay na sila, ibig sabihin, focus na yung iyong image. And that is the split image. Again, magka-cut into half, and as, e, as seen to the viewfinder, di ba? Yun yung itsura niya. And in order to focus, again, kailangan nilang magtagpo, kailangan nilang magpantay para masabi natin na focus na yung uh, image mo. And then, maayos na yung iyong lens. Nakafocus na siya sa iyong subject to be taken. While the coincident image, eto siya, a single image is seen double when the subject is out of focus. Kanina, ang ating indication na out of focus, kalahati sila, magkahati, or meron siyang uh, discontinuity sa line, putol, di ba? Hindi magkapantay. Ito naman, you can see on the viewfinder na doble yung image. And then, ang kailangan mong gawin uh, to make the image coincide and the lens now is in focus. So, again, with the coincident image, you look at the two images of the same subject. Nagmumukhang dalawa yung image mo, but isang subject laman, lang naman talaga yung tinitingnan mo. Within, and then within the area of the range finder, yun yung itsura niya. And then you have to turn, di ba, it into one, di ba? You have to turn the focus ring until they exactly coincide. Unlike kay split image, di ba, you will see either horizontal or vertical line na naghihiwalay sa kanila that splits the image and then you can observe, sabi ko nga kanina, discontinuity dun sa line. So, you just have to turn the focus ring until there is no discontinuity in the line. Dito naman sa coincident image, kailangan lang nilang mag-coincide, mag-meet, di ba, maglapat yung dalawang image, di ba, maging isa magmatch para maging focus na yung ating camera lens sa ating subject. Maging focus na yung ating image na makukuhanan. So, yan yung coincident image. Kailangan mag-coincide, kailangan mag-meet, kailangan maglapat yung two images na nakikita mo as double, di ba? Na dodoble yung subject mo. Kailangan mo lang silang uh, paglapatin or pag-match pag through the, ano, the controlling of the focusing ring mo. Kailangan mo lang naman niyang iikot-ikot. And then, lastly, we have the ground glass. Ito yung kung sino nakagamit na sa camera natin sa school. Ground glass po yung type natin ng rangefinder or yung focusing natin sa camera na yon. na kung saan it is focused by observing the image form at the ground glass screen place behind the, uh, the taken lens. The point of focus is where the image is sharpest. Automatic naman yan. Kapag nakita mo na sharp na yung image na nakikita mo kay viewfinder or dun sa Uh, sa camera mo, ibig sabihin siya is in focus na. ba? Diba? And then to use the ground glass, ba? Diba, you just have also to turn the focus ring on the lens until nga the image becomes clear on the glass. Example na lang dito. Hindi siya ganong ka-focus. So you have to turn the focus ring. You have here the soft focus and then you have here the sharp A focus, ibig sabihin, focus na yung iyong lens o yung iyong camera dun sa subject mo and you can now take the picture, ba? Diba? Kaya mong mag-produce ng sharp image na. Okay, next is uh, yung lens natin according to its focal length. So, marami tayong klase ng lenses, ba? Diba? Iba't ibang klase ng lenses that varies, 
di ba? In accordance to its respective uh, focal length. So, ano ba yung focal length na tinutukoy natin? So, it is usually uh, represented in millimeters na kung saan hindi siya yung total, di ba? It is the to not the total length of the lenses. Sabi nga natin, di ba? We have series of lens inside the camera. Pero hindi ibig sabihin no, na yung yung length ng series of uh, lens na yan, yun si focal length. So, hindi po. Uh, the focal length is actually the calculation of the uh, optical distance from where all light rays converge inside. So, eto, si light rays pumapasok. The distance na to the image sensors, I mean, to the image sensor of the camera. So, eto siya. The image or the light converge here and then yung distance niya to the focal plane I mean to the, to the sensor of the camera or dun sa film ng camera yun yung tinatawag natin na focal length. So yung distance dito in between ito yung point na kung saan yung all the light rays converge and then yung distance niya dun sa sensor natin kung saan, kung saan tumatama si light and then nagre-register si image. ba diba? Maalin lang yan kay sensor or kay film natin. Okay, so the focal length, diba, uh, tells us the angle of view. Ibig sabihin kung, kung gaano kadami or kung gaano kalawak yung scene that will be captured and uh, as well as the magnification or yung how large the subject will appear dun sa ating film or dun sa ating sensor. Diba, kung makikita mo dyan, we have the L 11mm as the lowest number. We have 900 Ibig sabihin, a millimeter na kung saan pinakamalaking number natin. Sabi nga natin, ang focal length na yan is responsible kung gano'ng kalawak yung field of view or yung coverage na pwedeng makuha na ni camera. For example, dito na lang tayo sa 35. That is comparable dun sa nakikita nung mata natin. Ibig sabihin, yung lawak ng coverage kung paano tayo nakakakita, yun yung lawak ng coverage na pwedeng makuha na ni 35mm na camera. While, sabi nga natin, naapektuhan din nito yung magnification na kung saan, uh, kung gaano kalaki, di ba, yung the subject will appear dun sa ating film or dun sa camera sensor natin. Kapag gumamit tayo ng mas malaking uh, focal length, di ba, 900mm, ibig sabihin, ganun siya ka-magnified, but the scope nung o yung field of view nung uh, image mo to be taken hindi nakita yung paligid niya but instead naka-focus ka dun sa subject mo itself di ba the lower the number again the wider the field of view di ba and the lower the magnification kasi hindi mo mamamagnify yung subject mo kasi kita niya yung ganung kalawak while the larger the number example 900 600 the narrower the field of view di ba mas maliit yung sakop ng iyong makukuhanan, but the greater the magnification is. Iba, decreasing the amount of the scene uh, of the camera na pwede mo makita. Uh, for example, eto. Shorter the focal length, malawak yung coverage mo. And then, the longer the focal length, you are capable of uh, magnifying the subject mo na gusto mong palakihin or gusto mong i-focus. Pero dun sa shorter na focal length, hindi mo siya magagawa kasi for example, 35mm, yun lang yung pinaka, pinakasagad mo na. So, hindi mo na siya mamamagnified. As compared dun sa mayroong mga longer na focal length, sabi ko nga, uh, you can uh, make your uh, subject or you can make your subject or yung object to appear larger. For example, 18mm. Di ba ganyan kalawak yung coverage niya o yung field of view na kaya niyang i-capture? While kapag dito sa malalaking uh, focal length natin, di ba, the longer or I mean the, the larger the focal length is, di ba, ganun din ka, ka magnified yung subject mo kasi kaya mo siyang mas ma-zoom in, kumbaga, eh, but decreasing the amount of scene the camera can see. Kung gagamitin mo yan sa garan sa 300mm, Ibig sabihin, minamagnified mo yung subject mo to be taken, but hindi mo naman, of course, masasakop na yung buong scene katulad nito. Ginamit mo si 300mm here, ito yung 
na magnified mo na subject, automatic excluded na yung yung scene mo dyan or yung coverage ng iyong ng view. So, yun, ganun yung focal length na tinutukoy natin. And then, each cameras nga ay meron niyang kanya-kanyang uh, focal length. So, simula natin kay uh, fish eye lens na merong uh, 8mm up to 24mm na focal length. Uh, describes an extreme wide angle lens that has an uh, angle view of exceeding 100 degrees uh, and sometimes more than 180 degrees. So, gano'ng kalawak yan. And that renders a scene as highly distorted. So, type of the camera lens na kung saan napakalawak ng coverage na kanyang pwedeng uh, makapture. Diba? But it is limited in use and cheaper to use for lands, uh, landscape photography. Diba? Landscape photography, malawak yung coverage ng view or ng field na gusto mong i-capture. But, sabi nga dyan, it renders a highly distorted image kapag ginamit mo dun sa mga close-up uh, subject mo, such as yung portraits mo, diba? Magiging distorted o uh, mag it produces a highly distorted image, di ba? It makes us facial feature looks distorted. Pag ginamit mo yan sa mukha ng tao, di ba? Alam nyo naman yung mga fish eye natin. Kung sisilip kayo, for example, dun sa sa pintuan, yung may butas na may lens na maliit, na kung saan kita mo ng ganong malawak yung nasa labas, pero napakaliit ng butas niya, yun po ay klase ng fish eye lens na kung saan ganun kalawak yung, yung kayang i-cover niya kapag ginamit mo siyang lens. Kitang-kita mo yung paligid mo ng ganong kalawak. So, ganun din siya nag operate dito sa camera lens natin. Mas malaki yung coverage niya, di ba nga, wide angle view yung kanyang pwedeng makapture. Pero nga, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi mo siya pwedeng magamit sa mga portrait natin na photography kasi ma it, uh, it highly produces a distorted image. Okay, next is the wide angle lens. Uh, from 24mm to 35mm. It is a lens with an angle of view that is wider than that of the normal lens, diba, which is 35mm, or that of the human eye. A wide angle lens has the focal length which is less than the diagonal of the film format, and then the angle of view is wider than 60 degrees, and the focal length is shorter than normal. So, ang wide angle lens natin, of course, is malawak yung kanyang angle of view as compared to the normal lens na i-discuss natin mamaya. Kasi nga, ang kanyang possible na pinakamaliit, diba, lowest is the 24mm. Sabi ko nga kanina, the lower the number of the uh, lens natin or the focal length ng lens natin, the wider the scope. So, meaning to say, mas malaki yung scope nito. As compared to the 35mm, that is comparable to the coverage ng human eye natin. So, yan po yung ating wide uh, angle lens na, na kung saan yung distortion na napoproduce ni fish eye lens natin is actually stops appearing. So, yan is normal na yung kanyang magiging uh, product. And then, ang kaibahan lang niya, Diba? Hindi siya distorted. And then, ganun pa rin yung sakop niya. Malawak pa din since uh, malaki yung coverage or yung field of view na pwede niyang masakop. That is the wide angle lens. Again, as compare to the normal lens na kung saan we have 35mm to 70mm. Diba? Sa normal lens natin is a lens with a focal length approximately equal to the diagonal of the film format. Yung dinutukoy natin dito is the size of the film. Uh, exactly yung kanyang sukat is uh, uh, approximately or equal to the diagonal diba, ng film format natin. Same as with the length ng normal lens natin which is the 35mm din. Uh, again, normal lens is uh, its, uh, its coverage is corresponds to the coverage of the human eye. Kung ano yung nakikita ng mata natin, same lang yan sa normal lens na nakikita or napoproduce na image. So, kung ano yung lawak na nakikita ng mata natin, yun din yung coverage ng normal lens. So, yan ay karaniwan sa mga cameras natin na ginagamit uh, everywhere na kung saan great walk around lenses and very popular lens. Na, ayun nga, karamihan nga or karaniwan sa mga cameras natin ngayon, 
is uh, 35 mm cameras up to 70 mm na uh, focal length ng ating lenses ng camera. Okay, next is the telephoto lens. Uh, that is typically start around uh, 70 mm to 300 mm. So, ito is usually ginagamit sa ating portrait uh, photography na kung saan it can produce a bigger image of an object. Diba? A lens with a narrow angle of view, a longer than normal focal length, so higher the magnification is, and the ability to magnify the images and exhibiting relatively shallow depth of field. So, mapapag-usapan natin ano ba si depth of field na, pina na pinatutungkalan natin. So, now, yung telephoto lens, tutukoy natin is capable of uh, magnifying diba, the object or it can make nga the bigger it can make a bigger image of an subject or object at the far distance iba ba sabi ko nga the higher the focal length or the longer the focal length natin uh, the area of coverage natin is iba lesser or lumiliit kasi nga the magnified your image is hindi mo naman sakop na yung buong coverage or yung buong uh, field of view natin kasi nga you are focused now to your subject alone to make it or to make it appear bigger. So, yan po yung ating klase ng lenses according to its focal length. Okay, next natin is the lens inherent defects or yung aberration na tinatawag natin. Yung defects or optical defects sa ating lens. Because yung lens naman natin is not always as perfect para makaproduce ng sharp image. So, the lens inherent defects, di ba? It is the imperfection in the way na kung saan yung lens focuses the light it captures. So, hindi able yung camera lenses natin to to focus perfectly the subject to be taken natin na yung gusto natin i-capture. So, we have again lens inherent defects. Simula natin kay spherical aberration. Photographic rays passing through the edges of a lens are bent or refracted more sharply than those passing through the lens. Thus, they come to focus nearer the lens than those of the central rays. So, kung mapapansin nyo dito sa ating illustration, those light rays that is passing through the edges sa gilid ng ating uh, uh, lens, ng camera lens, is yun yung uh, nagpoproduce ng mas sharp na image. Ano yung nangyayari dito? Sa halip na sharp yung image na napoproduce mo dahil hindi sila nagmimit on the same point, katulad nito, na kung saan, ang as a result, hindi sharp yung image na napoproduce. Na sa halip, di ba, mas sharp yung image na napoproduce dun sa dun sa nanggagaling na rays from the peripheral edges ng lens, di ba? Yung rays that is breaking or passing the peripheral or dun sa edges ng lens become more focused as compared dun sa a rays that is passing through the center. Kasi dito, di ba, hindi, hindi ganun nagmimit exactly. Ito lang nasa gilid or yung nasa edges ng lenses, imagine that ito yung bilog, lahat ng uh, ilaw, light rays that is passing to the edges, through the edges of the lens, yun lang yung in focus. Again, sa halip na sila ay nagmimit, di ba, to a single uh, point of focus, katulad nito, di ba, to produce a sharp image sa kanila, mas nagpo-produce yung edges, di ba? Nagpo-produce yung light rays that is coming from the edges ng lens, ng sharp image, as compared dun sa, nang, dun sa pumapasok mismo dun sa gitna ng portion ng lenses. Kaya naman hindi siya sharp image yung napoproduce yung nasa gilid lang, yung, yung uh, kanyang mas sharper, as compared dun, dun sa pumapasok through the lens. Di ba? Dapat ganyan. Kailangan mag-meet to a single point of focus para sharp yung image na na-produce. Pero dito sa spherical aberration, dahil yung rays that is passing dun sa edges lang ng lens, yung nag-meet, di ba, at the same point, yun lang yung nakaka-produce ng sharp image. And then, yung nasa ng portion ng, ng image o yung nasa ng rays, di ba, na tumatagos 
through the lens is hindi ganun ka sharp kasi hindi sila nagmimit di ba instead of forming a single a point di ba in it forms on different points kaya naman ito yung problema ng spherical aberration again yung pumapasok di ba yung the rays that is passing through the edges do sa spherical Uh, dun sa peripical edges ng lenses, di ba? Dun sa edges ng lenses, yun yung uh, nagiging more focus as compared to the rays again that is passing through the center of the lens. Yun yung problema ng spherical aberration na dapat kung walang ganyang problema, ganito yung uh, perfect or yung ganito yung tamang uh, mangyayari na kung saan nagmimit sila on a single point of focus to make the image sharp and clear. Okay, next is the chromatic aberration. The inability of a lens to focus all colors diba, sa wavelength natin, sa visible spectrum natin, at the same plane. This is normally only noticeable in long telephoto lenses. So, ano yung nangyayari dito? Inability daw ng lens na ma-focus yung lahat ng colors na nasasagap nito. So, for example, ito. Kung makikita nyo, di ba, mas reddish siya as compared to dito. Kasi dito, ibig sabihin yung lens dito is mas nagpo-focus siya dun sa red na color or wavelength na nasasagap ng ating camera or ng ating lens. So, ito pa yung isang example, di ba? Uh, the image here, di ba, represents, ito, the illustration here represents the all colors na tumatago sa ating camera lens. And, and then, as you can see, hindi sila nagmimit. Diba? An inability nga ng lens to focus all the color. Example dito. Dito. As you can see here, if you receive, eto siya, if you receive in this location, the image becomes bluer. And as you can see, diba, and then as you can see here, dito sa picture natin, diba, you can see the blue is more focused and the red is dispersed. Kasi si red dito, andun siya sa malayo. Hindi siya nakafocus o magkakaiba sila ng point na tinutumbok. Kaya naman dito, kung dito mo i-receive si image, ito yung pagbabasihan mo. Diba, the image is bluer. We can see that Uh, the blue is more focused as compared to red because the red here is dispersed, di ba? So, the image as a whole is told on the blue side. Dito naman sa kabila, for example, you will receive, di ba, the image here, di ba? On the other hand, if you go here on this side, again, on this point, na kung saan ang nag lang is the red color, di ba? Ito yung example niya. The red is focus and the blue now is out. As compared dito, si blue yung focus dito naman dahil ito yung point mo, for example, na, na, na pinagbasihan mo ng iyong image. The red now is more focus and the blue is out and the image as a whole is for the reddish side. So, yan yung problema ni chromatic aberration. Yung inability ng lens to focus all the colors kaya naman merong mas lamang na kulay na lumalabas. Diba, kung iyan ay walang problema sa kanyang chromatic, diba, sa kanyang chrome, diba, when we say chrome, sa kanyang color, dapat yan is nagmimit, diba, on an exact or single point para siya is uh, makapro makaproduce ng sharp image and then the balance colors ng all the wavelength na nasasagap ng ating lens. Yan yung chromatic aberration natin. Again, inability ng lens to focus all the colors. Kaya naman, merong mas reddish, di ba? Mas bluish. And then, sa green portion, so, yan siya. Next is astigmatism. So, alam naman natin sa mata din, ganun din yung kanyang application, medyo blurry. Na kung saan, a single point from a subject falling near the margin of the negative will be image, not as a point, but sa two uh, perpendicular short lines one of which is always be out of focus while the other is sharp. So, yan siya. Diba? Ang nangyayari dito, it causes the light source at the edges of the frame to stretch in a line shape. 
Nangyayari to ang kadalasan kapag yung lens, di ba, uh, does not focus on a perfectly flat plane and that is going to happen sa karamihan ng lenses natin to some degree. Kasi yung uh, back of the most lenses are curved, di ba? Curved naman yung karaniwan na ng mga likod ng ating lenses and then on very slight curve, piece of glass, yun yung nangyayari. You have a cone-shaped bit of light. You're getting a blurry area which has also different magnification than in focus area. Dahil nga hindi naman yan uh, flat, di ba, yung lenses natin. Uh, uh, automatically yan. Ang likod niyan is uh, curved din, di ba, or very slightly curved na nagkukos ng astigmatism. At ganyan yung nangyayari. For example, ito yung no at astigmatism. Normal lens, diba? Perfect lens na kung saan walang problema. Kapag yan ay mayroong astigmatism, ganyan kadalasan yung nangyayari. Mayroong malabong portion, and then, eto siya. Again, you're getting a blurry area, diba? Which has also different magnification than in focus area. So, astigmatism blurred yung some portion of the image. Okay, next is coma, a defect sometimes known as a lateral spherical aberration and it concerns with rays entering the lens obliquely. When we say obliquely, yung uh, rays that is uh, passing through the lens, pumapasok siya ng palihis or patagilid. Kaya naman, ang nagiging itsura ng kanyang resulta ng image is ganto. Diba, nagiging a... Uh, Sabi dyan, comet light or merong coma na itsura, di ba? Na kung saan, where single point of light enters a lens as, di ba, at its edge rather than the center. Sa halip na dito siya papasok, di ba, dun siya pumapasok sa edges niya, pat patagilid, kaya naman as a result, ganyan yung nagiging image o ganyan yung napoproduce niyang image. Na kung saan, some portion is sharp. But the majority is uh, hindi ganun siya ka-clear ka or ka-sharp. Hindi siya ganun kalinaw. Kasi nga, dun pa lang sa pagpasok ni light kay lens is malina or nagpapasok siya or it enters the, the lens in abnormal way. Kasi nga, patagilid sa halip na padaretsyo uh, wherein pumapasok sa edges and then sa center. So, ganun si coma. Okay, next natin is distortion, which is another very common uh, lens defects na kung saan the outer parts of the image produced by the lens will be magnified either less or more than the center image na kung saan distorted yung napoproduce mong image. So, eto siya. We have two types, which is the barrel and the pincushion. Wherein, again, the distortion can happen vertically or horizontally. Wherein, we have here the barrel. Wherein, the captured scene looks smaller at the edges. Diba? Mas maliit yung makikita mo dito or sa gilid niya of the frame rather than the center. Kasi, mas nasi-stretch yung kanyang center portion. Kaya naman yung gilid niya, diba, looks smaller. While sa ating pincushion, ito siya. Seen at the edges of the frame look bigger than the center. Kasi nga, uh, siya is nag-stretch inward na kung saan yung kanyang outer or yung kanyang edge portion, yun yung lumalawak. So, example na lang dito is the fish eye or the super wide, uh, or the super wide angle na lenses na kung saan uh, uh, totally na distort or yung nasi-stretch yung kanyang image, yung napoproduce niyang Image. Generally, incapable of rendering a straight line, either a straight light. So, ibig sabihin, itong camera lens na to, hindi siya capable of rendering a straight, uh, of capturing or rendering a straight line or straight na mga subject natin or objects na kinukuhanan kasi it will appear distorted. Diba? Either the straight light that is coming uh, or passing through the lens, hindi niya rin to mararecognize Kasi nga, ang ating lens ay merong problema na kung saan it makes the image distorted. So, yan po yung ating distortion. And then, lastly, curvature of field, 
when the image formed by lens comes to sharper focus on the curved surface than on flat surface. The plane of sharpest focus becomes curved, not flat. So, ano yung nangyayari dyan? The lens doesn't focus the light uh, onto a flat plane. But instead, it focuses on one that is an imaginary curve surface. So, sa halip na yung lens, yung nagre-register o yung pumapasok kay lens, di ba, na image or the light that is coming from the subject, uh, siya is lalapat kay flat plane, di ba? But instead, yung nangyayari, it produces an imaginary curve surface na kung saan image suffer from the aberration seem as the center is in focus na kung saan yung center niya is in focus yung nandito while uh, the edges aren't uh, that can also happen in reverse so maalin lang dyan bakit kasi it assumes diba or I mean the the lenses assume that yung yung film plane diba yung kung paano siya nagre-record sa ating film o doon sa sensor, pa-curve yung kanyang sagap o pa-curve yung kanyang bato ng image sa ating film plane na kung saan, sabi nga natin, curvature of field, sa halip na straight, dito siya, di ba? Straight yung kanyang, uh, yung kanyang pagpasok sa ating uh, film o yung kanyang pagtama sa ating, sa ating uh, film plane. So, ganyan siya, nagiging curve. Kaya naman, instead of producing a flat image, nagiging curve din yung image, uh, resulting to that the center, yun lang yung tumama or yun lang yung assuming na, na tumama dun sa gitna, dun sa, sa plane natin or dun sa sensor natin, kaya yun yung sharp image. While yung nasa gilid niya, is pa-curve yung bato dun sa ating sensor or dun sa ating film. Kaya naman yung gilid niya, Dahil nga curvature of field, ganun yung naging resulta. Parang malabo or blurry and then sa center lang yung malinaw. Again, the lens doesn't focus the light onto a flat plane. Ina-assume niya, uh, again, instead, uh, yung focus niya, di ba, on that is an imaginary curve surface. Kaya naman nagiging curve din yung itsura niya the curvature of field sa halip na straight or flat plane to produce a sharp image nagiging curve din yung side or yung edges niya kaya ganyan yung kanyang itsura okay next natin is yung types of lenses natin according to their degree of correction yung lenses natin na pwede nating magamit para ma-correct yung mga lens uh, defects natin or yung aberration na na-discuss natin kanina to correct the chromatic aberration or yung color natin in ability of the lens to focus all the colors, uh, meron tayong achromatic lens para dyan. Next is the rapid uh, rectilinear lens that is used to correct lens distortion. An astigmat lens, lens to uh, use to correct astigmatism as well as other lens defect. And apochromat lens used to correct astigmatism but with higher degree of correction kay color din. So, yan lang yung uh, uh, ilan sa mga lenses natin na makakatulong to correct diba, the, the defects of the lens natin na merong aberration. So, now, punta tayo sa relative aperture. So, ano yung meron dito? So, the light gathering power of the lens diba, is expressed in F number system. It is otherwise called the relative aperture or lens opening by increasing or decreasing the number or the f number numerically it is possible to control the amount of light that is passing through the lens to control the depth of field field na i-discuss natin mamaya and then lastly to control the degree of sharpness due to lens defect especially dun sa spherical aberration by uh Making the aperture opening smaller or bigger, pwede nating magawa, magamit yon para makontrol yung degree ng sharpness due to the defects na, na dulot nung spherical aberration. So, again, ano ba yung meron lang sa relative aperture? Ito po is the, uh, alam nyo naman what is the aperture, it is the opening. So, it is the light gathering power nung aperture opening that is expressed in F number. 
di ba? Sabi nga natin, the, the higher the F number, ibig sabihin, the smaller the aperture is. And then, the lower the F number is, the, the, the bigger the aperture opening is. So, mapapalawak pa natin yan mamaya. At ano ba yung use talaga ni aperture para makaproduce tayo ng isang magandang image? Okay, sabi ko nga kanina, the relative aperture or yung aperture opening natin is uh, identified or represented by its F numbers that allows the light to enter and reach the film or the camera sensor natin. And then, the aperture opening natin, it it can be adjusted, sabi ko nga, much like the iris of the human eye, which dilate or contract depending on the availability of the light. So, dito sa ating aperture opening, as you can see, diba, the larger the number, diba, the higher the number of, of the aperture opening or the higher the F number is, the smaller the, the opening of the aperture. While the smaller the number, diba, the lower the number or the lower the F number is, ibig sabihin, kabaliktaran siya na kung saan mas malaki naman yung kanyang pagbuka. And then, ganun lang yan nadodobol at nadodobol lang yung kanyang pagliit at ng kanyang laki depende din dun sa paglaki or yung pagliit ng kanyang F numbers. So, mamaya madidiscuss pa natin yan. But for now, balikan natin yung ka kanina. Okay, sabi ko nga kanina, diba, the aperture is the hole in the lens. The aperture is the opening in the lens through which the light enters or travels into para makapasok kay camera. Uh, para maka pasok or makarating kay film natin or dun sa camera sensor natin. And then, to understand more, compare natin ulit siya sa ating eye. Diba? Uh, all the cameras are designed like human eyes. Wherein, yung cornea, eto, cornea of our eye is similar to the front element of our uh, lens or of our camera which is the Lens. Again, kung saan dyan, sa butas na yan, pumapasok yung ating liwanag para ma-reach yung ating film. Same as we dun sa mata, we have the, the pupil of the eye na kung saan dyan, pumapasok yung light para maabot yung retina ng ating mata. Now, we have here the iris. etong nasa gilid niya. Ito nasa gilid niya. Na kung saan it can be expand or shrink controlling the size of the pupil which passes light into the inner eye. Now, the pupil, di ba, sa ating mata is what we refer now as to the aperture ng ating lens. So, we have pupil here na nag uh, na nag uh, expand, di ba, or nag shrink. We have the aperture na siya rin yung lumalaki and lumiliit yung opening sa ating lens. And then, the larger the pupil, the more light falls on the, onto the retina. Same as we dun din sa ating uh, sa aperture, the larger the aperture, diba, the more light enters the camera. So, same lang siya ng principle. Pag lumalaki si pupil, automatic yan, mas maraming light yung nare-receive ng ating mata. Same as with the, sa aperture natin, mas malaki yung aperture opening, mas malaki o mas maraming light yung nare-receive ng ating camera and tumatama sa ating film or sa ating sensor. And now, balikan natin si Iris. Ito siya, diba? Na kung saan siya yung nag-control, diba? Doon sa paglaki at pagliit ng pupil ng mata ng tao. While dito sa aperture natin, we have the diaphragm. Sorry. We have the diaphragm. Ito siya. A metal that is, uh, can be expanded or constricted by having turning the ring on the lens or mount or the barrel. Na kung saan, dito sa ating lens, we have the the diaphragm, na siya yung uh, lumiliit or siya yung nag expand siya yung nag-constrict. As compared to the human eye, we have the iris. Iris, I mean, siya yung lumiliit, siya yung lumalaki. While dito sa atin, again, sa lens, we have the diaphragm, na siya yung nag-adjust para mapalaki yung ating aperture o yung butas na dinatawag natin. So, ganun siya nag-work kung i-compare natin sa mata natin. Again, the pupil, yun yung nag-act uh, nag as the aperture kasi yun yung opening ng ating lens. Gano kalaki, gano kaliit. While the uh, cornea natin, it acts as the lens kasi yun yung pinaka-front element natin. 
while the diaphragm natin, eto, the metal, di ba, which can be expanded or constricted, depende yan kung paano mo siya i-control, kung mas malaki ba or mas maliit yung gusto mong opening, as compared to the human eye, yung iris yung bahala dyan, siya yung lumalaki and siya yung lumiliit, na kung saan yung pupil natin nakadepende sa kanya, kung gano'n kalaki or gano'n kaliit. Same as with the camera natin that we have the aperture, which is the opening again, yung butas, kung gano'n siya kalaki or gano'n kaliit, nakadepende dun sa uh, expansion or dun kung gano'n ka kalaki or kung gano'n liliit or kung gano'n mag adjust yung diaphragm ng ating camera lens. So now, uh, sabi ko nga kanina, ba diba, the, uh, the aperture opening is expressed in F numbers or yung F stops na tinatawag natin. It is a way again of describing how open or close or how widely open or narrow the aperture opening is. Wherein, sabi ko nga kanina, the smaller the F stop number or the F number is or the lower the number is, the larger the opening, di ba, resulting to more light na papasok sa ating camera. Kasi nga, mas malaking butas, maraming light mas maraming light yung papasok. While the the larger the number, di ba, as compare F, uh, stop number 1.4 to 5.6, di ba, mas malaki naman siya. Meaning to say, the larger the number, di ba, it doubles or mas nadodoble yung pagliit ng ating aperture size. So, mas malaki, mas dumiliit yung ating aperture opening. Again, the larger the aperture size, meaning to say, maliit yung kanyang F number. The smaller the aperture size, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung kanyang F-stop number. Again, tulad nito, F11 as compared to F1.4 uh, kanina, ba mas malaki. So, mas malaki yung kanyang number, mas lumiliit yung kanyang aperture size. Again, in short, uh, the larger the number or the F-stop number, Ibig sabihin, maliit yung buka. The smaller the f-stop number, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung aperture size or yung aperture opening natin. So, yan siya. Lumiliit, ba? Palaki ng palaki yung number niya, mas lumiliit yung kanyang butas. As compared to the uh, small or dun, dun, dun sa lower na f-stop number, malaki yung kanyang aperture size. So, aside from controlling the amount of light passing through the lens, kung gano'n natin i-control, kung gano'n kalaki yung buka nyo or kaliit, uh, the aperture has also a great or, uh, I mean, has also a direct impact on the depth of field, wherein the area of the image that appears sharp. So, mapapag-usapan pa natin yan mamaya. Na kung saan, Yung depth of field na pinag-uusapan natin, kung gano ba ka-sharp yung image na mapoproduce mo or kung gano mo ma-highlight yung subject na gusto mong uh, i-focus. Na kung saan, sabi natin, yung aperture opening natin may kinalaman daw sa depth of field. Uh, the larger f-stop number, ibig sabihin maliit yung opening mo, it will bring a foreground diba, and background object into focus. Ibig sabihin, Yung scope ng iyong uh, image is lahat yan is in focus o sharp yung mapoproduce mo. Kapag again, maliit yung opening mo at malaki yung iyong F number. Kasi kapag malaki yung F numbers mo o yung F stop numbers mo, ibig sabihin yan, maliit yung opening. Again, and then kapag maliit yung F stop number mo, automatic yan. Diba? Automatic yan. Diba? Pag maliit yung f-stop number mo, automatic yan, malaki yung opening mo. Again, balik tayo dun sa kanina. Sabi ko, uh, the smaller the opening is, ibig sabihin malaki yung f-stop number mo. It will give you, diba? It will give you a, a sharp image na kung saan focus mo, ma-in-focus ka dun sa total coverage ng iyong Scene, it will bring all the foreground and background object into focus. While, kapag mayroong a smaller f-stop number, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung aperture opening mo. Ano yung magiging resulta niyan or epekto dun sa depth of field na sinasabi natin? The smaller the f-stop, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung buka ni aperture, it will isolate either yung foreground mo or yung background ng iyong 
uh, field of view, di ba, or objects, and make everything else blurry, aside from the subject na gusto mong maging focus, na kung saan, di ba, yan yung ka, karaniwan din sa ginagawang effects sa pag-take ng photos, yung mga selfie photos na uh, blurry yung background o kaya blurry yung nasa front ng, ng subject mo. Yan yung ginagamit natin. May epekto yung aperture opening natin kung gaano tayo makakaproduce ng sharp image. Diba? Kapag sharp image, dapat maliit yung opening niyan. Kapag maliit, ibig sabihin malaking F numbers yung gagamitin niyan. And then, kapag gusto mo naman na uh, ma-bring into highlight yung subject mo and then blur yung background mo o yung foreground mo, gumamit ka ng malaking aperture size. So, meaning to say, maliit na F stop number. So, ganun siya nag-work. Again, si F stop numbers is wherein uh, the larger the number, ibig sabihin, the smaller the opening is, kapag maliit yung opening, kaunting light lang yung papasok. And then, the the smaller the f-stop number is, ibig sabihin, the larger the aperture opening is, and then the the more light will enter the camera. So, mas maraming light ang makakapasok kasi mas malaki yung kanyang butas. And then, may kinalaman sa depth of field, field na kung saan mas malaki yung aperture opening, uh, mas nagiging blurry yung effect ng uh, it's either foreground sa harapan or the background, and then yung focus mo lang is yung subject, and then kapag maliit naman yung iyong aperture opening, uh, makakaproduce ka ng sharp image. Ibig sabihin, the all in all na image na, pin, uh, na kinuhanan mo is sharp. It appears sharp and then walang blurry na, na portion sa iyong image. So, yun po yung ating aperture or yung relative aperture. Okay, next natin is the shutter speed. A movable uh, cover for an opening, it opens and closes to control the length of time, strikes the film, and in photography, that opening is the lens, more specifically, the aperture. So, ang pinag-uusapan natin dito, sorry, that is a shutter, a movable cover, wherein yung shutter speed na tinutukoy natin, it is the exposure time, diba? the length of time, the film or the image sensor in a camera is exposed to the incoming light. Kung gaano ka katagal mong ahaya ang nakabukas, yung shutter, di ba? Sorry, the shutter na tinutukoy natin or yung movable cover natin for the light to enter the film and then para mag-register mag-register si image. Kung gaano katagal mong i-expose si film or si sensor kay light. Nakadepende yan sa ating shutter speed. So, eto siya, a movable cover for an opening. Opening. So, eto si mirror kanina, ba? Once na pinindot mo si shutter, tataas yan. And then, etong si cover dyan, eto si shutter na tinutukoy natin. At yan is gagalaw, bababayan, para ma-expose yung ating film sa light. So, now, discuss natin. Yung kanina, eto si viewfinder, eto si mirror, Tataas yan kapag pumasok, ah, para pumasok si light kay film. Pag pinundit natin si shutter. So now, isa-isahin natin. Sa ating standard na SLR, na-discuss ko na what is SLR, and sa DSLR natin, when you press the shutter button dito, eto, kapag pinundit mo si shutter button, the mirror flips up. Sabi ko nga kanina, yung mirror lang naman is responsible para makita sa viewfinder uh, yung subject na gusto mong kuhanan. So, once na pinindot mo si shutter, tataas yung ating uh, mirror. And then, once the mirror is flip upwards, a small door or the curtain-like o yung window-like curtain sa ating loob ng camera will move from top to bottom. So, ito yung mangyayari. Tumaas si si uh, mirror, kasi pinindot mo si shutter, and then, dito tayo, unti-unti yung ating shutter is bababa para ma-expose si film kay light, and then, babalik siya sa kanyang original position para matakpan ulit ang ating, ang ating film. So, ganyan nag operate yung ating shutter. Diba? Once na pinindot mo siya, tataas si ating, balik tayo, tataas si mirror, and then siya, bababa para expose niya para expose niya si film kay light. 
So, once the mirror is split up again, di ba? Magbubukas yan, exposing the sensor beneath it. And then, kapag na-expose na siya, di ba? Na-expose na. Okay, na-expose na siya. Babalik lang sa pesto si mirror. So, babalik siya sa pesto and then magkasarado na ulit yung ating uh, mirror and then magkasarado na ulit automatically yung ating shutter. Na kung saan, again, ang pinag-uusapan lang natin dito is kung gaano ba kabilis, diba, sa shutter speed natin, kung baano ba, kung gaano ba kabilis, diba, bababa at sasara ulit yung ating shutter para ma-expose si film sa ating light sa gantong kabilis na 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 time or dun sa gantong kabagal na time. So, ganun po si shutter speed na go-operate. Diba, the longer the shutter is kept open, nakadepende yan dun sa shutter speed na ibibigay natin. And then, kapag mas matagal, of course, yung shutter speed, diba, the more light will enter the camera. So, ganun lang siya. Again, ulitin lang natin, tataas si mirror, and then, gagalaw yung ating shutter, and then, bubuka siya at sasara, depende dun sa shutter speed na binigay natin. Mas mabilis, mas mabilis yung buka, mas mabagal, mas mabagal yung buka at sara. So, ganun po siya. Okay, again, yung shutter speed natin is represented as fraction of a second. For example, eto. Eto yung tinutukoy ko kanina before that. Eto yung tinutukoy ko kanina na sa DSLR, di ba, uh, meron kang LCD screen na kung saan, aside from the viewfinder, kung saan mo sinisilip yung iyong subject na kukuhanan, pwede mo siyang makita dito. So, meron ka lang kailangan pindutin dyan para hindi mo nasilipin dito. At dito mo makikita yung lawak ng cover o coverage or field of view, field of view na kinukuhanan mo. So, yan siya. So, going back to the uh, shutter speed, ito is represented as fraction of a second. Wherein, for example, dito, 1.8, diba? 1.8 second exposure, wherein the shutter opens and closes within 1.8 of a second. So, dito tayo sa 1 over 15 second exposure, wherein the shutter opens and closes within 1 uh, and 15 of a second. So, ganun siya. Dito tayo sa dulo, di ba sa kabilisan. For example, 1 over 800, I mean 8,000. With, wherein the, uh, the shutter opens and closes within 1 8,000 of a second. So, ganun siya kabilis. You may have noticed that even though uh, a one second seems very fast, but it is actually a very slow shutter speed compared to 4,000 and 8,000. Kung ikukumpara natin yung, yung uh, one second na pagbuka at pagsara ng ating shutter, yun po is considered as a very slow as compared dun sa 8,000 natin. For example, eto siya. Itong uh, image na to or itong photo na to is kinapture using the uh, 1 second na exposure time. As compared dito, diba, ang ginamit dito is 1 of a, uh, I mean, within 1 and 2,000 of a second. Diba? Ganun siya kabilis, kaya hindi niya, na, hindi niya nakuhanan yung, yung, yung dako na gumagalaw. Kasi ganun kabilis yung kanyang shutter speed. Again, ang ating shutter speed is represented uh, as fraction. And then, alam nyo naman kung paano, uh, kung paano yung fraction. Diba? The, kung habang nahahati at nahahati yan, diba? uh, mas bumibilis ang bumibilis yung kanyang uh, shutter speed. And then, again, yung one, diba? one second, one of a second, yan is considered as a slow uh, shutter speed. Habang tumataas yung ating uh, number, ibig sabihin, mas tumataas yung kanyang shutter speed at mabibilis. Ibig sabihin, uh, capable yung higher shutter speed of capturing a moving object. Kung, kung ang kukuhanan mo is yung, yung mga naglalaro, mga naglalangoy, eh, doon sa wildlife, gusto mong kuhanan yung ibon, gusto mong kuhanan yung tumatakbong uh, animals, you have to use uh, faster, high, uh, faster shutter speed para makapture mo yung kanilang movements. At hindi dyan tatabay Itong mga mabababang uh, shutter speed, 1 over 8, diba? 1 of, uh, one of a, 1 eight of a second, diba? 1 uh, 15 of a second. So, hindi, hindi mo siya gano'ng makakapture ng, ng sharp. So, makikita, makikita at makikita mo na blurred yung makukuha na mong image. As compared to dun, dun sa shutter speed na mabilis, 
Uh, to be exact, dito sa ating example is 1, uh, within 1 a thousand of a second. So, ganun siya kabilis. Yan yung ating shutter speed. Okay, next natin ay si ISO. It is uh, basically the level of your sensitivity or the sensitivity of your camera sensor to the light that is available when you're shooting. So, kung ikukumpara natin siya dito, for example, we have the aperture kanina and then the shutter speed. Uh, it both physically uh, affects or physically controls the light na pwedeng pumasok kay camera. Kay aperture, lakihan mo lang siya or diitan, it physically affects or controls kung gaano kadami yung pwede mong papapasok. Wherein, kapag nilakihan mo, of course, mas maraming light yung papasok. Kapag niliitan mo, konting light lang yung papasok. And with regards to shutter speed, mas mabilis, mas maunti yung time, exposure time ni film kay light. Mas mabagal yung sara and pagbukas ng ating shutter speed, mas maraming time na pwedeng ma-expose si film or si camera sensor kay light. But kay ISO, sabi nga natin, iba siya. Wherein it digitally controls the light. Hindi niya physically uh, naapektuhan kung gaano kadaming light yung papasok. But instead, the ISO sensitivity na tinatawag natin, siya is meron lang a digital na intervention kung paano natin mapapaliwanag yung ating image na pwedeng maproduce. So, so madidiscuss pa natin yan mamaya. Let us first uh, compare the camera sensor natin or yung ISO natin to the microphone. Wherein, di ba, the microphone gathers sound waves from the source just like the camera wherein it gathers the light that is coming from the source. Si microphone, di ba, uh, will turn out into sound file while the, the camera, di ba, magta-turn into an image na pwede nating isave. So now, ano yung mangyayari? If you're trying to record ating microphone yung sobrang hina na boses tulad ng pabulong, di ba, and then you try to increase the sensitivity of the microphone, Ganon din yung mangyayari sa ating camera. When you try to capture an image to a dark area and then tinry mo na taasan yung sensitivity or yung ISO mo, it uh, produces a noises. Same as dun sa microphone, di ba? Uh, for example, na-record mo na yung sound mo which is a whisper. Napakahina niya. Pero when you try to amplify, you try to volume up Diba, the, the sound, ang maririnig mo, lalakas lang si whisper, pero still, uh, yung product niya is still a whisper, mahina yan. But you, you just try to scale up or to amplify up yung sound na naproduce mo. But ang mangyayari, yung the background noises also amplified as well. You may even try to hear or may even hear the, the sound of the microphone, electrical na sounds na po-produce. Similar lang yan dun sa, micro, uh, sa camera natin na kung saan kapag ini-increase mo si ISO ng ating camera, it also increases the sensitivity to everything. Diba? Revealing anything on it as well as the electrical grains in the system. Diba? Wherein yung phenomenon na tinatawag natin na yon is the noise. Basically, it is a camera setting that will brighten or darken a photo for that reason. Uh, ISO can help you to capture images in darker environment. Yun nga yung tinutukoy ko kanina na si ISO is responsible para matulungan ka na yung image mo is mapaliwanag. But, sabi ko nga kanina, hindi siya part ng, ng physical control ng ating camera na kung saan uh, inaalaw niya na maparami yung light and then mapaunti yung light. No, yung ating ISO, yan is uh, digitally nagwo-work, na kung saan nagkakaroon ng interference within the electronic charges sa ating camera, na siya yung nagpaparami ng supply ng ilaw para lumiwanag yung ating image na napoproduce. But sabi nga natin, may mga drawbacks tayo dyan, na kung saan nagpoproduce ng noise. Kung dito sa microphone natin, di ba, lumalakas, nag-amplify yung sound as a whole, na kung saan yung ibang sounds, naririnig din natin, lumalakas din. But still, yung na-record mo is a whisper. Same with dun sa camera natin, na kung saan, in-scale up mo yung ISO na, 
it produces a noise. So, eto siya. It produces a noise. Yan yung nai-introduce ng pagtaas mo ng ISO. But, on the other hand, sabi nga natin, basically, the ISO uh, makes your image brighter on the darker uh, environment. So, yun yung kanyang trabaho si ISO. Mas malaki yung ISO, so, ibig sabihin, mas malaki yung uh, uh, chances na maliwanag yung iyong makapture na image. So, back in the film day, di ba, we have also an ISO. Di ba, may tunutukoy din tayo ng ISO. Uh, was often referred to as ASA, di ba, the combination of ASA and DIN, which is referring to the sensitivity ng film kay light. Where in the lower the number ng ating film speed, di ba, it indicates a lesser sensitivity kay light. Ibig sabihin, mabagal yung reaction ng ating film kay light or matatawag natin siya na slow film. So, you, if you pick up a roll of ISO 100, you know now that due to its relative insensitivity to light, kailangan mo ng mas maraming ilaw. Kailangan mong gamitin si ISO 100 dun sa bright lighting condition. And then you also understood now, na-discuss ko naman yan, that a roll of ISO 400, mas mataas kay 100, film was better suited for lower a lighting condition. Like indoors and faster and more sensitive uh, like indoors. And then, uh, discuss ko na rin, diba, that it is faster and more sensitive than ISO 100. Kasi nga, the larger the ISO rating, the film speed rating, diba, it is proportionally uh, corresponding kung gano'n rin siya kabilis. And in digital photography, na pinag-uusapan natin dito, it is the manner in which ISO was measured uh, in the same way. Diba? Uh, yung ISO... Uh, or the film speed natin noon, di ba, uh, the manner in which ISO was measured dito sa ating digital photography is measured the same way. 100 ISO is still less sensitive, of course, than 200. Uh, wherein, uh, which is less sensitive naman si 200 as compared to 400, and so on. And the biggest uh, difference is that in film days, ISO is referred to as physical qualities ng ating film, uh, so the film you use, di ba, how physically, now saan, how physically sensitive yung film natin to light, wherein now, sa ating digital photography, refers to an electronic process inside the camera. How brighter the image yung pwede nating maproduce. And then, the term ISO na tinutukoy natin was later adopted by digital cameras nga. Kasi dati ginagamit to as the combination of the ASA and DIN, di ba, uh, adapted by the digital cameras manufacturers with the purpose of maintaining a similar bright uh, brightness level as films noon. Diba? Uh, back then, diba, ISO is a combination nga ng ASA and DIN and now it is quite simply na uh, referring to the brightness or sensitivity ng, ng sensor or ng digital sensor natin sa ating light. Kapag sa ISO natin, sa digital photography, kapag dinodoble mo or tinataasan mo rin yung ISO numbers mo, diba, you, you are also doubling the brightness of your image. But be mindful that uh, DSLR has only one single sensitivity. Isa lang yung sensitivity ng sensors natin. Regardless of ISO na gusto mong iset. It is more accurate to say that ISO is like mapping. ba To tell how bright the output. Diba? Meron na tayong a physical control, which is the aperture and the shutter speed. Sila yung nagko-control o sila yung nagsasabi kay camera kung gano'ng kadaming light ang papasok. Sila yung bahala don sa exposure na pwedeng... Uh, magkaroon si film kay light si film kay light while si ISO di ba it, it is also like a mapping to tell how bright the output kung bagay kung ano yung kung gaano na lang kaliwanag yung magiging resulta uh, of the photo should be given in a particular input exposure na ginamit nga natin si shutter speed and si aperture so it it, it is like the the scaling up or the amplifying through the interference, through the digitally controlling the light na meron tayo. But again, hindi siya part ng exposure na kinokontrol mo physically kung gano'ng kadaming light yung papasok. Uh, you are controlling the light uh, digitally kung gano'ng mo mapa-amplify ma yung, yung brightness ng image or ng output mo or kung hayahayaan mo na lang siyang gano'ng kadilim. 
it is scaling up or amplifying your your image para mapaliwanag siya. So, yung meron ka ng output through the exposure na ginamit mo si shutter and si aperture, your, si aperture now, uh, kinocombine mo si ISO, di ba, na madilim yung paligid, you are trying to make the image appear brighter through the ISO sensitivity na meron tayo, through the ISO setting na tinataasan mo yung yung kanyang brightness. So, yun po yung si ISO natin. So, ISO application, sabi ko nga, same lang din yan sa film. Mababang ISO, o yung tinatawag natin the, na base, di ba, na lowest ISO value, which is the base ISO, gamitin mo siya sa labas, outdoor photography, na kung saan marami ng ilaw na kailangan. So, hindi mo na kailangan ng mat mataas na value ng ISO. So, which is the 100, di ba, the base ISO. Ginagamit yan sa outdoor photography. Diba? And then, mid-range ISO. Yung katamtaman na ilaw, yung, yung uh, lighting condition mo sa paligid. Depends on the lighting condition. Depende kung ka gano'ng kadami yung ilaw mo. Uh, usually sa indoor photography. And then, we have the high ISO. Of course, ginagamit mo yan kapag madilim yung paligid mo. Hindi naman natin nililimit na sabihin natin na huwag mong gamitin yung high ISO kasi uh, magpo-produce ng noise. Pero may use din naman kasi yung pagtaas mo ng ISO usually, uh, lalo na paggabi, during night. And other uh, night photography na gusto mong maka-capture ng image kahit madilim yung paligid. So, taasan mo lang si ISO and it will uh, help you to brighten up your image. So, yan po si ISO. Diba? The higher the f-stop number, the brighter the image is. For example, ito, gabi to kinuhanan. And then, you are using the base ISO, which is the ISO 100. ISO 100, na kung saan yung f-stop mo, medyo may kalakihin pa rin yung opening. So, ibig sabihin, sa lahat ng possible na masagap mong ilaw, pwede mong masagap kasi malaki yung buka mo. But, the problem is madlim talaga yung paligid. And then, you are still using the base ISO. Ganyan yung resulta niya. While, kung siya is gagamitan natin ng mas mataas na ISO, we have ISO 800, ibig sabihin, kaya mong mapaliwanag yung image mo. Kaya mong ma-brighten ma up or mapaliwanag yung yung output mo. But again, wala yung kinalaman sa so kung gaano kadaming light yung pwede mong mapapasok kasi yung shutter speed and, uh, and then the aperture yung bahala doon. Itong si ISO, it digitally uh, affects the output, diba? napapaliwanag niya or napapadilim yung ating output or yung ating image. But, it introduces the noise na tinatawag natin. Okay, as compared dito din sa base ISO, or the lowest ISO value, which is 100, mas lumiwanag, of course, si 800. And then, mas maliwanag pa yung pwedeng ma-produce kay mas mataas na ISO number, which is the 6 uh, and a 400. ISO 6 and a, uh, 6 and a 400, na kung saan mas mapapaliwanag mo yung kanyang image. Pero depende na yan sa'yo, ba? As much as possible, kung marami namang light sources sa paligid, gamitin mo si base ISO. Saka mo na lang i-manipulate kung gaano kalaki yung aperture mo or gaano mo kabibilisan yung at yung shutter speed para mas maraming light na papasok. So kasi si ISO, pinakalist mo na yan na gagalawin para lang mapaliwanag yung iyong image. Kung magawala ka ng uh, source of light at all para ma ma-brighten up mo yung iyong image. So depende na rin yan kung anong klase kang photographer. Depende na yan kung paano mo lalaruin si shutter speed, si aperture opening, uh, together with the ISO setting. So, depende talaga yan sa'yo. But, again, si ISO, uh, make sure to use the base ISO. As always, pwera na lang nga kung during night time, kailangan mo talagang maliwanag yung maproduce mo. Next, we have the exposure. It is the product of illumination and time. Uh, to simply put, it is the amount of light that enters the camera hitting the camera sensor. So, yun po yung exposure natin. The, the amount of light na in-expose mo si film or si sensor sa kanya. Kung gano'ng katagal yung exposure mo at kung gano'ng kadaming exposure or kung, kadang, or kung gano'ng kadaming light yung in-expose mo kay film or kay camera sensor para, para matulungan ka to produce a brighter and sharper image. Yan po yung exposure na tinatawag natin. Na kung saan, ba if uh, there is not enough light, 
uh, that enters the camera, ibig sabihin, maliit yung opening mo, o yung aperture opening mo, o mabilis yung shutter speed mo, uh, the image will be too dark, or yung tinatawag natin na under exposed. And then, if too much light, yung na-receive natin, or yung pumasok, it will turn the image into bright, or yung tinatawag natin over expose. Again, too much light, diba, overexposed, and then counting light, yung ma-receive natin is under exposed. Na-discuss ko na yan sa inyo. Wherein, nabanggit ko din nung una na na kapag siya is na-overexposed, diba, sabi natin dito, kapag overexposed or too much light yung na-receive natin, maliwanag yung mapoproduce mong image. But, may binanggit ako doon, naalala ko siya, na, na it's either will be too light or too bright or too dark. Yung tinutukoy ko doon na too dark is the film itself. The negative film, na kung saan it becomes too dark, di ba, kapag ito is na over Expose. Yung film, kapag siya is na-develop mo, is magiging sobrang dilem. And it is also possible, if the film reduce too much, uh, I mean, if the film is receive too much uh, developing time. So, yun yung nangyayari. Uh, masyadong didilem or masyadong iitem yung iyong uh, negative film. But, kapag sa digital photography natin, di ba, too much light, sobrang liwanag yung mapoproduce mong image. And then, kapag sobrang uh, unti naman yung light na inalaw mo na pumasok, di ba, ibig sabihin, maliit lang yung opening mo, yung shutter uh, speed mo mabagal, and then yung aperture opening mo maliit. Ibig sabihin, underexposed yung possible mong maging resulta o it will look like uh, darker or muddy print and so on. As compared dun sa overexposed na sobrang liwanag. Okay, now, may tinatawag tayo na exposure triangle or yung three pillars of photography. Again, the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, which makes uh, the three sides of the triangle or the exposure triangle nga. They work together to produce a photograph that is properly exposed. Wherein, if one uh, variable or if one portion of this changes, at least uh, of the others or the other uh, features must also change to maintain the correct exposure. Kapag pinalitan mo si shutter speed, papalitan mo of course si aperture, and so on. But then again, si ISO is technically not a part of the exposure. Nakakatulong lang siya to brighten the image, but physically, hindi siya kasali dun sa exposure natin na nag nagdedetermine kung gano'ng kadaming light yung pwede nating mapapasok physically. Because ISO, digitally, siya is nag interfere lang kung gano'ng natin mapapaliwanag yung image kapag madilim yung, yung, uh, yung environment natin kapag nagtitake ng photo. Again, we're in si shutter speed. Again, it is the length of time na allowed yung... Uh, yung light to hit the sensor. O na kung saan, di ba, the one, uh, one second as compared to one and a one thousand of a second, mabagal to as compared dito. Kasi eto, mas mabilis ng ilang stop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Mas mabilis siya ng ganong kabilis. Um, okay, mas mabilis yung kanyang shutter speed, it decreases the exposure time. For example, one and a one thousand of a second. Ibig sabihin, ganun kabilis yung buka at sara ng kanyang Shutter, ibig sabihin, ganun din kaunti yung exposure time at ganun din kaunti yung light na papasok ka sa kanya. As compare, dito, one stop increases the exposure time. Diba? Mas bumabagal. Diba? Hanggang umabot ka kay one second, ibig sabihin, mas mahaba yung exposure time niya, mas matagal yung exposure time, mas matagal yung pagbukas at pagsara ni shutter natin, ibig sabihin, mas maraming light yung papasok sa ating camera. So, ganun siya nagwo-work. Hindi ibig sabihin na mas mabilis si shutter speed, mas maraming light ang papasok. So, no, mas mabilis si shutter speed, konti lang yung chances ng light na makapasok. And then, mas mabagal si shutter speed, mas mahaba yung exposure time na pwede nating ma-expose si film or si camera sensor kay light. So, ganun si shutter speed. Next is the aperture opening. Sabi ko nga kanina, di ba, the size of the circular hole or the opening sa ating lens that lets in light. 
nag-aalaw kay Light kung gaano kadami ba ang papasok sa kanya or kung gaano kaunti, depende dun sa kanyang laki. Sabi ko nga, the larger the f-stop number, ganun kaliit yung butas niya. And then, the smaller the f-stop number, ganun kalaki yung kanyang uh, butas. Na kung saan, uh, ang aperture lang naman, di ba, every time that you double the area of the opening, the every time na nilalakihan mo yung opening niya, uh, you double also the amount of light na pinapayagan mo pumasok kay camera. Or it increases the exposure by one stop. Diba? The more na nilalakihan mo yung kanyang opening, diba? the, the more na dumadami yung uh, light na pinapayagan mong pumasok sa kanya. You increases the exposure kasi mas marami yung light na pwedeng pumasok sa kanya. Again, nakadepende yan sa kung gaano kalaki yung opening or yung hole ng iyong aperture. Diba? The smaller the aperture, eto siya, the larger the opening, ibig sabihin, mas maraming light ang papasok. And then, the larger the f-stop number, the smaller the opening, and then, konti lang yung light na mapapermit mo na pumasok kay lens, and then, pumasok kay camera at tatama kay film. So, kailangan mong balansehin yan. Kapag maliit si aperture, Mag, magdedepende ka dyan kay shutter speed kung bibilisan mo din ba o babagalan kasi kung maliit na nga and then mabagal pa yung shutter speed mo gano'n kaunti lang yung papasok dyan so ma maunting light lang automatic yan medyo madilim yung image na ma mapuproduce mo while for example uh, malaki yung aperture mo and then napakabagal pa nung iyong uh, shutter speed malaki yung aperture and then ginamitan mo pa ng 1 second na na shutter speed. Matagal yung exposure time, ibig sabihin maraming pagkakataon na pumasok yung light. And then, mala, mala, madami pa. And then, malaki pa, I mean, yung, yung aperture opening mo, ibig sabihin, sobra-sobrang light na yung papasok sa kanya. So, dapat balance lang yan on how you will control the shutter speed. Nakadepende nga rin yan kung gano'ng kaganda yung image mo. Kung kung isasakto mo din kung gano'ng kalaki yung kanyang aperture opening as well as the ISO. And, ito na nga yung ISO. So, you may think again that it is the sensitivity of the digital sensor. So, hindi po ito yung uh, sensitivity ng sensor natin, ng camera sensor. Again, kasi yung camera sensor na kung saan doon tumatama yung ilaw, it only has a single sensitivity. It has alarm. Uh, yung ISO natin is a lot more complicated than that. So, mahirap siya masyadong intindihin. And then, to explain it into a lighter uh, side, diba, the higher the ISO, mas tumataas yung ISO natin, as you increases the ISO, the brighter image you will produce. But, the drawback here is maraming noise na mapoproduce. While the lower ISO, diba, 200, 100, which is the base ISO, the, the darker the image, and then, walang noise na mapoproduce. Uh, na kung saan, kapag gumamit ka nga lang ng uh, low ISO, make sure na marami kang light na source. Marami kang source of light sa paligid mo at gagamitin mo lagi yung base ISO mo kapag ikaw ay outdoor. Ibig sabihin, maraming light na, na pwede maging source mo para makaproduce ka ng maliwanag na image. Kasi kung gagamitin mo si base ISO, which is 100, inside the, the room na napakalilim, na walang ilaw, wala ka na makikita. Pero kapag si base ISO, which is 100, sa labas, wala yung apek epekto. Depende na yan kung gano'n na lang kaliwanag yung light that is coming from the sun or other sources of light sa outdoor photography. So again, the higher the ISO number, mas malaki yung chances na maliwanag yung image mo. And then the lower the ISO number, the darker the image is, but depende yan dun sa lighting condition kung saan mo siya gagamitin. Pag maliwanag na yung paligid mo, wag ka nang gumamit ng high ISO. Dun ka na sa base ISO. Pero kung ma madilim yung paligid mo, uh, kung kaya mong mag-provide ng other light sources, such as the, the bulb or ibang ilaw, gumamit ka. Pero pag wala kang magagamit, use a higher scale of ISO. So, ganun po siya. Ganun, ganun nagwo-work yung ating shutter speed, yung ating uh, aperture opening, and the ISO. And, may tinatawag tayo na aperture 
a priority and then the shutter speed priority and then the manual. Ito sa mga digital cameras na natin. Na kung saan, kapag ginamit mo si aperture priority, ito siya, i- itama mo lang yung ating, uh, I mean, i-set mo lang yung iyong camera into aperture priority, which uh, usually stands uh, in A, dun sa ating setting, iikot mo lang yan, itama mo lang dito, naka-aperture priority ka, na kung saan, it permits you or the photographer to set your aperture. Kung anong gusto mong aperture opening, depende sa'yo kung ano yung isa-set mo. And then, uh, yung camera na yung bahala, kung anong Uh, shutter speed yung i-apply niya. Ibig sabihin, kapag naka-aperture priority ka, again, hinahayaan ka ng camera na iset mo yung aperture opening na gusto mo. And you leave the camera to automatically uh, determine kung ano ba yung shutter speed o yung correct shutter speed na pwede niyang gamitin. While the, uh, the shutter speed, diba, the shutter priority, ganun din. Ikaw, ikaw yung mag-set ng shutter mo and then the camera na yung bahala dun sa aperture and then dun sa ISO. And we have the manual mode na kung saan uh, sa lahat ng uh, settings na yan, diba, ikaw yung bahalang pumili kung ano yung gusto mo. Ikaw yung bahala kung ano yung mag-work that is best for your situation. But the only catch here o yung isa sa magiging problema mo kung hindi ka professional na na photographer, ba? Diba, you will need to know Uh, how to adjust the settings, the shutter speed, and the aperture, and the ISO to maintain the proper image uh, brightness. Kasi kung wala kang alam sa photography, hindi mo pwedeng i-manual mode yan kasi hindi ka marunong mag-set ng aperture, ng shutter speed, and the ISO. Pero kung marunong ka, uh, ikaw yung bahala mag-explore. ba? Diba? The more you explore, the more ka na matututo sa photography. At yun po yung work, again, ng tatlong pillars ng photography. The ISO, the shutter speed, and the aperture opening. And then last natin is the depth of field. Sabi ko nga kanina, diba, si aperture is may kinalaman sa depth of field. So, discuss muna natin siya. It is the zone of acceptable sharpness or the area or zone of the photograph from front to back, which is in focus, or the range of distance in a scene that appears to be in focus and will reproduce as being acceptably sharp in an image. Na kung saan, it is the space dun sa image mo na gusto mong kuhanan, na gusto mong maging sharp, or mag gusto mong maging focus lang. ba? Diba? You have a larger depth of field. Ibig sabihin, gusto mo lahat sa image mo, o yung sakop ng coverage ng image mo, is Uh, clear and sharp yung ma-produce. While, for example, you have, you want to have a shallow depth of field na kung saan yung gusto mo lang bigyan ng focus sa picture mo or dun sa image mo, yun lang yung sharp. And then the rest, di ba, yung foreground and then the background is blurry. Yun po yung depth of field na tinutukoy natin. Again, yung space sa image mo that is relatively sharp in focus uh, depending on the distance between the nearest between the nearest and the farthest elements that are sharp and in focus in your photos. ba? Diba? Na kung saan, depende sa'yo kung gusto mong sharp yung image as a whole or merong portion of your of the image na kung saan gusto mong bigyan ng focus and then everything uh, on the image as a whole is blurred aside from the thing or the subject na gusto mong bigyan ng focus. Again, The depth of field is the distance between two subjects, the nearest and the farthest to your camera lens. And depende na yun sa iyo kung gusto mong bigyan ng focus lahat as a whole, yung image na gusto mong kuhanan, or yung the nearest to you or the farthest to you. Pwedeng, pwede yung baliktad, eto yung maliwanag and then eto yung blurry. So depende yan sa iyo. Yun yung depth of field na tinutukoy natin, na kung saan, And dito is sa example natin, we have here a small or a shallow depth of field na kung saan you have a portion in your image na yun lang yung gusto mong i-focus. And then the subject, this subject or your flower is in focus while the background is being blurred. You have a shallow depth of field. While, while here, you have a larger area in focus, you have a larger depth of field or yung deep depth of of field na kung saan uh, yung the image as a whole, di ba? You have the larger area and the image as a whole is sharp and clear. And that is the larger depth 
of field na tinutukoy natin as compared dito na you have uh, some Uh, something that is in focus, hindi siya kabuuan, and depende na sa'yo kung gusto mong blur yung front mo, eto yung blurred, o kaya naman yung background yung blurred mo, at eto yung maliwanag, eto yung malinaw. So, depende na yan sa'yo. It's either the foreground or the background yung magiging blurred. So, that is the shallow depth of field. So, sabi ko nga, at first, yung na-discuss ko na, si aperture opening is may kinalaman dyan kung gano'n mo mabibigyan ng shallow or ng large or deep depth of field. Depende yan sa opening. If gusto mo ng ganyan na uh, magkaroon ng larger uh, depth of field, di ba? you should use a uh, smaller aperture opening, di ba? the smaller aperture opening, gumamit ka ng malaking f-stop number. Kung gusto mong lahat ng yan is sharp and clear, you have to produce, a, uh, you will now produce a sharp, Uh, image, di ba? A larger depth of field, gumamit ka ng maliit, again, aperture opening na kung saan malaki yung f-stop number. Wherein, sa kabaliktaran, kung gusto mong magkaroon ng uh, effect na ganyan na blurred yung background or yung foreground mo o yung uh, object mo that is nearest to the, uh, the lens, di ba? Depende na yan sa'yo. Gumamit ka ngayon ng malaking aperture opening na kung saan meron siyang maliit na f-stop number. So, ganun siya. Uh, the wider the opening, di ba? The, the, the shallow depth of field is, and then the, the, the narrower the opening ng ating aperture. So, ganun siya ka sharp yung image na mapoproduce. So, you will have now a large depth of field or deep depth of field. So, with regards to depth of field, meron tayong uh, factors affecting the depth of field in photography. At napasimula na nga natin dyan si aperture. May kinalaman si aperture kung gaano ka shallow or gaano ka deep yung iyong depth of field. So, hindi ko na ulitin. Pangalawa is the focal length. Yung focal length natin is may kinalaman kung paano natin mabibigyan ng shallower or larger depth of field yung ating image. The shorter the focal length, the larger depth of field, and then the larger the focal length, diba? yung, yung magnification mo, mas mas malaki yung sakop, mas kaya mong ma-zoom in yung, yung image mo, ma-focus yung image mo, the shallower depth of field. Wherein, the shorter the focal length, mas malaki yung coverage mo, and then the larger depth of field, or yung sharpness ng image, or the, yung the clearer the image yung pwede mong ma-produce, yung focal length na natutukoy natin kanina, di ba? The, the smaller the millimeters, ibig sabihin, mas malawak yung coverage niyan. And then, the larger the the millimeter or yung kanyang focal length, di ba? The, the higher the magnification is, so capable siya of zooming in or yung uh, making the subject in focus resulting to the shallower depth of field. Kaya mong mag-focus and then kaya mong maging a blur yung background niya. While the focusing distance, nakaka-apekto rin siya, di ba? Yung distance ng lens mo kay subject itself. Di ba? The further the subject you were focusing, the larger the depth of field. Mas malayo ka sa subject mo, mas malaki yung sakop mo, and then the sharper the image is, ba? Diba? The larger the depth of field, yung sakop ng iyong nakukuhanan. Uh, and then the, the closer you are dun sa subject na gusto mong uh, maging focus, and then the, shadow, uh, the shallower or the swallower the, the depth of field is, ba? Diba? Kung mapapansin nyo, kung magpipicture kayo, mas malapit kayo sa gusto mong bigyan ng focus, nagiging blurry yung background niya. At yun yung, yun yung kinalaman ng focusing distance mo. Mas malapit ka, mas shallow yung depth of field mo, possible na maging blurry yung background, and then mas malayo ka, mas malaki yung scope ng iyong depth of field, and then mas sharper yung image mo, mas clearer yung, yung image mo as a whole. Depende sa distance mo, sa gusto mong kuhanan. And then lastly, The depth of field, uh, may relasyon siya sa sensor size o yung dun sa size ng digital sensor mo. Iba, the larger the camera sensor, the larger the depth of field. Same lang din dun sa isa. And then, the smaller the camera sensor size, the shallower or the shallower the depth of field na pwede mong maproduce. And again, si depth of field na pinag-uusapan natin is the relation between the sorry, between the nearest and the farthest object. Kung gano'n mo pwedeng maging uh, sharp yung image or gano'n mo pwede siyang maging clear 
at pwede mo siyang maging uh, blurry yung background, di ba? Depende na yan kung gusto mo maging shallower or maging larger yung scope ng iyong image. Again, the distance between the nearest and farthest. Kung gusto mong both is sharper yung kalalabasan as a whole, gumamit ka ng larger upper ay ng smaller aperture and then the rest of the factors para lahat yan maging sharp lahat yan maging malinaw katulad nito but kung gusto mo for example i-focus lang tong kabayo di ba uh, make use of a larger aperture di ba and then i-focus mo lang yung camera lens mo sa kanya and then everything on its background magiging blurry siya so ganun po yung ating depth of field